one day I was laying on the bed and I got this email from this MMA website. I said, hey man, season 17 of the Ultimate Fighter, Ultimate Fighter uh, is coming up. I think you should definitely try out and do it. And I was like, thank you, God. You yeah. know, this yeah. is out of the blue? Cause I, yeah, it was, oh. it was just a, a Facebook message. And back then, you know, you have to fight to get in the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, even prior to that, I was looking for a job. It was hard because that's all I knew for years, martial arts. Mm -hmm. And when I got that message, I, I, I went online, I called my sister, and I bought a one-way ticket because I had no way of coming home. I was like, I have to make it. Mm. If I don't make it, I'm, I have to beg on the street. That's why I was thinking. I was like, wow. there's, I, I didn't set up a security blanket. There's no plan B. So for those of you that um, watch My Little Ponies and Disney Channel constantly, you may not know who this individual <laughs> to my right is. Uh, Wasn't but, he on Even Steven back in the day? That's true. That's <laughs> a good point. Uh, do you, do yeah. you even know what that is? <laughs> Sounds funny. Yeah. No, it's, it's, funny. It's, it's, an white, it's white folks. Oh, it's right. an old white folks. Even that's definitely Steven. why I don't know. Yeah, they bring up where, all these things Isn't that where Shia LaBeouf got to start? It, it, that, he, was even, he was Steven. No, Shia LaBeouf. I think he was the. Yes. I think he was the brother. Look it up. Nope, I'm looking it up right. While you talk, I'm looking it up. Are anyways. we wasting time about? Yes, we're talking nobody's about. Nobody's wasting time. Yes, I've seen sister, was, sister. I there mean. you go. Okay. There you go. It's <laughs> same, same channel, same, Cultural same era. Difference. Same <laughs> era. <laughs> Just a. <hate. laughs> anyway, so we have the number nine right now. I'm going back up, but the number nine middleweight fighter. In the world, Uriah Hall sitting next to me. Thank you, man, for joining us. So yeah, uh, I don't know where to look, but this is we've been we've been we've been like as excited slash nervous. That's Shia, by the way. I know that who he is. Uh, <laughs> excited slash nervous because what we're doing is we we've drawn straws on who you're going to put in a rear naked. Um, and Darren unfortunately drew. Oh, you know, I'm <laughs> true. That ain't I think that's one shot after dark, hey. isn't it? No. <laughs> Y'all got to be the same. Naked. Yeah. Back in college, we're just going to turn the lights out. And see what <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, but uh, we appreciate you coming on, man. You're in the in the middle of camp. You've got a fight July second, right? Mm. Yes. Um, Good old Vegas. Oh, good old Vegas. But uh man, this is this is your push, right? For for a title. And this is yeah. this is your this is I, I don't want to say like this is not obviously your last chance, but you know, you're you've been fighting for a long time. And this yeah. is important to you to get a title shot. And this is that first Heck, step. Absolutely. It's um I mean, I I've, I've been in the sport for so long. I started training when I was uh sixteen years old. Mm. Uh, come to the country as an immigrant from Jamaica, I was bullied. Didn't even know what bullying was. Well, hold on, because we want to dig dig way yeah. into this. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. breeze over this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but just yeah, a little intro uh, to Uriah and, and man, we uh, we got to connect. Uh, I guess it's been a little while now, a few few yeah. weeks, few months, maybe a month. But we went to a charity event, man, and it was awesome. It was a, a, a children's cancer event, mm -hmm. and man, Uriah was awesome with these kids. Like, Wait, mm. you, you didn't know them before two or three weeks ago? No, that was the first time. Oh, you had like younger boys yeah. from like back in the day. <laughs> oh, man, every, dude, if someone's famous, I, they're my boy. <laughs> I'm a regular guy, man. <laughs> but that's what was, that's what was awesome, man. I was really impressed is, is, you know, first time meeting you, but then you go into this event and just seeing you interact with these kids that, that have, you know, are up against really, really hard challenges in their life or have gone through it. And it was just awesome and got to spend the night with you. Uh, that evening it was awesome and so we're like yeah we got we got to get this guy on mm. we gotta yeah. we gotta tell your story because now we're gonna go back to the beginning because <laughs> your story is awesome man and it's <laughs> uh it really is is a motivating inspirational story because i you just think kind of fighters all just kind of grow up as badasses mm -hmm. and like that's yeah. just who they are and they always fought and they were always the toughest kid and and that's not your I was story punk, man i was I was this little fragile little thing. Even when I was really small, uh, they used to call me Budwis, which is a Jamaican term of this uh, this tree that grew and it was just so long and, and tiny. And I think I was kind of a preemie. And um, yeah, yeah, I just remember my childhood in Jamaica just being very fun. And, mm -hmm. you know, we played a lot outside, if you guys remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of it. Crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't stay inside. 
Um, but it was just a, a different type of culture and, and, and coming to America, coming to America, yeah. coming to America, uh, it was just, uh, it was just a cultural shock because New York city was just so real, you know, and there was yeah. no, t there was no guidance. There was no manual. It was like, all right, get in there and be somebody. And, you know, bullying was one of the first things I encountered. And of course, you know, kids are mean, but it was because I was different. I didn't realize I was different in my mind. We're all the same, you know? And, yeah. and uh, that played an effect so much where it, it ruined my confidence. Yeah. Again, it was like a whole new world to me and getting bullied so bad that losing my confidence, not wanting to go to school, walking with my head down, it, it really plays an effect where I started to cut, cut classes mm -hmm. and I kept doing that. Didn't realize they would call your home. And, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, my mom got the phone call like, Hey, uh, your son hasn't been in school. I'm like, she's like, what the blah, 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 blah. And I broke down and started crying. And, you know, I told her, hey, I hate school. I don't want to go. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting bullied and it's not something I want to look, you know, forward to. And this was like my beginning year of high school. But even oh, junior this high. high school. This yeah, but, but junior younger. high, that's when I really, that's when it got worse. Mm -hmm. But junior high, I just kind of, I took it, you know. I, mm -hmm. Every day I just get bullied and I got beat up one time. I got beat up so bad by a bully. He, uh, man, he, he, he beat me up on the bus and another bully I remember jumped in and be like, hey man, that's enough, bro. That's Oh wow. And it was like five more stops before mine. I just got off and I just remember walking home just just devastated and I can't believe I'm I mean, I don't know if I could say this, but I, I actually had the mentality of going back to school to hurt this person mm -hmm. and whoever laughed at me, which we've mm -hmm. seen mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. a lot of kids go back to school and I do remember it was a Friday and I was spending the weekend trying to find some type of weapon to wow. to go back to school because mm. at 15 i didn't know any better and mm -hmm. that was my like escape i was like these kids will never pick on me again i, I wasn't thinking about the repercussion right. of what would happen to me yeah. so luckily i couldn't <laughs> you know i remember asking some guy and he was looking at me, what the hell are you talking about bro? you better get out of here and mm. i just didn't want to go back to school on a monday and the whole weekend i'm like i gotta find something i gotta find something Luckily, I didn't. I went back and took it for another year. And when high school came, yeah. oh, that's dark. Yeah. Were you bullied? And you said they called you names in Jamaica. Were you bullied like that though in Jamaica as well? No, never. I was never bullied in Jamaica. I mean, the, the way like we would dress like this with no shoes. Mm, <laughs> you know, uh, this was right. like you didn't even need shoes. Shoes was like okay, nobody cares. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, I just grew up like that. You know, I didn't even know what racism was. I Mm -hmm. I remember the first time encountering it, I'm like, what do you mean? And it was just such a weird feeling to me. Mm -hmm. And it was like my, my mind was starting to open up like, wait, there's a difference? And at a young age, not having a father figure too. You know, my mm -hmm. mom was a single mom. and So let's go back on outlet. that. So you're a single mom in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So single mom, brothers, yeah. sisters? Oh, so there's, <laughs> there's five boys, two girls. Oh five boys, gosh. two girls. I'm the last hey, one. Just wow. your mom. Just my mom. What a saint. Okay, so when did you move? When did you guys come over to, ah, to New York? Ah, man, so we, it was like sporadic. I mean, it's a long story. It was sporadic, but I was like the last one to come. Huh. And, we got uh, time. Yeah. <laughs> my <laughs> aunt. Six hours, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My aunt, who, if you can think of an evil Disney character, that was my aunt, man. Mm. And, you know, she treated my mom just really bad. Mm. And if I can give one thing she did that I, I could never got over was, when my mom was pregnant, I forgot with who, uh, she told my grandparents to kick her out the house. And my, our, my mom said she had to sleep under the, the veranda, the cellar, because we had goats and stuff in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And she had to sleep with the animals while she was like maybe five, six months pregnant oh, or, or, or maybe wow. less. And she had to do that for a while. So I grew up hating, I hate the powerful word, hating my aunt. And, you know, my, my religious background was a Seventh-day Adventist. So we didn't celebrate like Christmas mm -hmm. or holidays. So as a kid, I, I didn't have any of that. And I remember when Christmas came and you go back to school and kids had new uniforms and I had to wear my same, you know, it killed me. Mm. And I just grew up hating every holidays. And then my aunt didn't like me because she didn't like my, uh, my dad. And I, I just didn't understand. And I was like six, seven. And I remember they all left and I was staying on the veranda, which is, you know, our house is a little higher up. And I was six and seven. I remember this. I just remember them driving off. And I think it was maybe Christmas Eve. We're just sitting there. And I sat there for like eight hours. Wow. I just sat there. And something happened where I just built up this hate for holidays, for her. 
And, you know, later on in life, she kind of came around and asked for forgiveness. And I was just so, like, torn from it. I was mm. like, I could never. And I remember saying mm. some very harsh stuff where I was like, you you lucky I'm not a, a woman. <laughs> you know, I was yeah. just angry. And my mother, credit to her for instilling these things upon me. I was like, how could you be around someone like that? She did this stuff to you. And she was like, she's my sister. I'm like, what? That means nothing. Blah, blah, blah. And she's yeah. like, my son, you know. My son. <laughs> she was like, you know, God created us in, our, in his own image. And I am who I am. And it doesn't mean I have to change who I am because this person treated me like that. I know who I am. Mm. And she taught me at a young age to always remember who I am. You know, there's some bad people in this world. But you don't have to take away from who you are. Yeah, they're going to hurt you. You're going to do all that stuff. And it's so easy to go into that mindset to want to do bad. But you can never forget who you are. And I struggle with that because I am that guy. And I always wanted to be mean and angry. And even with fighting, you know, I'll knock you out and I'll apologize. I'll be like, hey, man, you okay? I'm sorry <laughs> about that. And my coach was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I'm like, I, I, I don't know. And I struggled with it for years because I didn't grow up like that, you know, mm -hmm. like. The other day, my coach was in the uh, gym giving a speech about, I remember when we were kids, we used to throw toilet papers and people's houses and stuff like that. I was like, I never did that. Yeah. And they were saying, yeah, but, you know, kids used to do I'm like, I never done any of that. Mm. And they were like, how do you never do that? I'm like, it's culture, man. I, I was raised differently. I, right. I didn't find any happiness hurting people. <laughs> yeah. right. So I just grew up like that. And in the fight world where it's barbaric, Mm -hmm. And it's you have to be this type of character, and I've struggled with that because I'm a nice guy. You know, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how to kill you. I don't have a killer mentality. I have a competitive mentality. I'll mm -hmm. compete against you. I look across at the octagon and I say, "What's the best way to dismantle this person?" I don't say, "I'm gonna kill you, mother." I don't know yeah. how to do that mm -hmm. because I'm very competitive, and I can go on. <laughs> yeah. No, no. So okay. So you you were one of the last of your family to come from Jamaica. Where in New York did you end up landing? Queens, New York. Queens. Okay. Oh wow. Not so, Jamaica, Queens. J Jamaica, Queens. Yeah. Yeah. Jamaica, yeah. Queens. There and it's funny go. when I landed, I was like, oh damn, did I leave? Because yeah. it said Jamaica, <laughs> and I was confused. <laughs> You're right, I got him. <laughs> we spun around for four hours. <laughs> got you. So, Not, so you go yeah. to New York, and and it's it's you, your mom, and all of your siblings are in New York. No, no, no. Uh, so some of my siblings were back in Jamaica. Okay, it was my mom and uh, one of my 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 sister that's right before me. Okay. Um, by then, my my brothers uh, okay. had their places and stuff like that. Oh, they were older, so you guys were yeah. Younger yeah. Younger. I'm the I'm the youngest one. Okay. Uh, they're all like. Late forties, mm -hmm. okay. but uh, I'm I'm the last one. What, what was the cause for the move again? Did you say? I mean, when you think of America, you just think of better life mm -hmm. until you get here. But when you, <laughs> think of, <laughs> when you think of America, you know, and I think at that time it was just like you wanted a better mm -hmm. uh, life. I mean, all my friends in Jamaica are dead, mm, and wow. I'm sure if I was there, I, I would have been dead too. Mm. Uh, everybody I grew up with, I spoke to people. They're like, "Oh yeah, he's gone." I'm like, "What about this guy?" Oh, he's gone. What about her? Oh, she's dead. What the? F yeah. So, so what is it then? I mean, because you, you Americans, you think of Jamaica and you think like beautiful, luscious, and then like strong culture. Wow. But then, yeah. but then I've like when you actually, I went in 2010, and you're like, all right, like it's not like you go through the city, right? It's mm. you go it's, through Kingston, Kingston. It's, man, it's, it's yeah. I don't even go well, to Kingston. Man. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 So, so what is it? I mean, is it, is it heavily, is it gangs? Is it drugs? What is it that, I mean, you know, with what I can tell, if there's no structure, proper structure, yeah. things will get out of hand. Mm -hmm. um, I left when I was 13 and that atmosphere that I was brought up around was just a fun mentality. I, I've never had to worry about anything. And I think for most kids they do, but I just remember being free minded to express myself to to do mm -hmm. fundamental things such mm -hmm. as we made our own toys you know mm -hmm. i i can make a tr a truck out of milk boxes you know i can mm -hmm. make a kite i can make a go-kart and i grew up with that i remember here getting my first toy at electronic i'm like oh my god this is yeah. precious this, this <laughs> right. electric right you yes. had no idea no right. idea it was like a whole new world being poor it wasn't poor you were just it was life like i said we were yeah. dressed like this yeah. and we didn't wear shoes because it was nothing until I came here, it was like, where's your shoes, bro? Huh? You know, right. so it was just right. a different world.
Yeah, you said go karts, and I'm not gonna lie. The first thing I think of when I think of cool Jamaica, running, or cool, it's cool running. <laughs> <laughs> you know how long it took me to watch that damn movie because all my white friends were like, bro, you don't like them. I'm like, hell no. Bro. None of them were Jamaicans, man. The They're push, all Jafakins. The push <laughs> cart, yeah. the push cart derby. The, the, yeah, yeah uh, I can make those carts, but. You know, I, I saw clips of it when I was younger, and you I was like, cool they're not yeah. Jamaican. The accent was terrible. Uh, <laughs> Those dudes. Yeah, it was just. Reese and Everybody Osaka. loved it. All my white friends loved it. Orange that. County. They're all brothers oh, yeah, from Orange County. Yeah, some white dude from Massachusetts. All my white friends loved <laughs> They loved it, that bro. Movie. How do you not like That's from your country. <laughs> you don't understand, bro. You don't understand. <laughs> I'm glad I just fit right into the stereotype. Oh, <laughs> man. All right. Great movie, though. Great I movie. Finally After saw it. The fact, Great movie. Yeah. I finally saw it. My buddy's <laughs> six-year-old kid convinced me to see it. Yeah. I sat with her, and I was like, this is actually really good. And it uh, still holds. If you watch it today, yeah. it's still funny. It, it's still I, I funny. It I couldn't believe it. five-year-old son not long ago. It's I still funny. I couldn't believe it's funny. Yeah. yeah. It's, anyway. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> you br- let's go back to that point where you break down to your mom, and you, yeah. and you share with her early in high school that... I don't want to go to school. I'm, I'm battling, you know, getting bullied. I'm, I just, I, I hate it. Right. Where, where does it go from there? We decided to put me into a, um, uh, a CSI psychiatrist mm. and mm. Uh, literally the, the psych, the, the place was right next to a martial arts uh, uh, Gym. gyms, karate spot. Mm. And uh, I remember seeing the, the, the specialist and right away, Within maybe five, six seconds, he was like, you got no confidence. I'm like, good job, buddy. Yeah. And, uh, We're paying you, we'll you for, We're paying you for yeah. this? But that's the only thing I remember him saying. He said a bunch of stuff. But when we walked out, my mom was saying something. And I remember just looking up. And I'm like, oh, karate. And then we walked in. We did a trial program. And just like that, the, West, the rest was history. Mm. Yeah, it was just, I took off. Uh a cool story prior to fighting, I taught myself from a video game called Tekken. I don't oh, know if yeah. I can say it on there or whatever. Yeah. But I, Tekken is my all time favorite game, and it was 3D. It was Tekken 3 at the time. So learning the moves was easy because, you know, you put on your VHS, remember those? Right. And yep. you, you, you would practice the move. I would move the furniture and I would practice. So I knew what I was uh, doing. And I always loved martial arts ever since I was really, really, really young for some reason. Mm-hmm. So when I started, I was just excelling so fast and I remember the sensei is like what the hell did you learn all this stuff and I was like uh I don't know I felt <laughs> embarrassed to say something uh-huh. fast forward 20 years later I met the creators of Tekken and Comic-Con and they invited <laughs> me and I did the whole speech another story no way but uh it, that's how I learned and when I walked in to do the orientation uh train still nervous and <clears throat> for me it was just every day I didn't care about school I was still cutting school because I was like karate karate right. mm-hmm. And, you know, my grades was just plummeting and I had to talk and it was like, I dropped out. I ended up dropping out of school. Hmm. And uh, I remember wanting to go back to school because, you know, I was like, you know, I need my, my degree just to fit in society or everything mm-hmm. like that. And I was thinking like this at maybe six, 17. And uh, I had to talk with my sensei <laughs> and he sat me down. He was like, I gave a whole speech and he was like, that's cool, man. I was like, I'm not going to lie to you. School is not for everybody. It's not. If you want to do it, no problem. But I'm letting you know right now, you have a gift and you can run with this. And there's so many more opportunities and doors you can open with this. But you can take that route if you want. But I'm telling you what I see. And luckily, this man saw me where I didn't want to step outside my comfort zone. He made me compete. And I was like, Mm. Sensei, I don't want to compete. And he was like, you need to learn to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Mm. And he kept pushing me with that. And that instilled upon me to this day to get comfortable because life is going to hit you hard. Mm-hmm. And it's how you take it and just keep going, you know, Rocky Balboa. Yeah. So yeah. with that mentality, I just kept moving forward. Was he your first true male role model in your life at that point? Uh, I would say my brother, Jeff. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't really talk as much because people mentality has changed, you know, mm. over the course of my Time on this planet in this country it's just people change you know friends that i've grown up with it's just even family family more so um i have families in in, in jamaica that look at me as like this how do i say piggy bank mm-hmm. or money bank yeah and you know they don't realize that 
I got to pay taxes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to, I got to fend for myself. Yeah. My career is like, I'm a, what do you call it? A, a private contractor, yeah, you know, yeah. like I lose a fire. I could lose my job. So it's a little different, you know? Yeah, it's money, but it's like most of it is taken away and right. it's a little harder. So they don't understand that, especially in Jamaica, they just say, oh, you in America? Oh, you, you're rich. I'm like, right. I don't have well, money. Well, they see treat. you on TV too. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's just it. They see yeah. first generation. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I don't talk to a, a lot of my brothers. And it's sad because especially my, my, my older brother, Jeff, he really, when I first came to the country, just, you know, taught me how to be a man, you know, mm. he introduced me to, to, to our cultural music that I've forgotten and, you know, how he carried himself. And when you say he taught me how to be a man, what, what was his definition of a man at that point? Just how to take care of myself. He was a barber mm. and I, I looked at him as that figure where how he dresses, how he carries himself. Um, we're always put together and um you know independent but just small stuff i still didn't know much and after that i just met so many other father figures i have so many father figures and i wish i had that more in my own dad i, I didn't get to really spend more time with my dad because you know i don't want to dive too deep but my dad at one point lied to me and told me my grandfather passed away to to get money mm. and i was i remember being devastated because I, I grew up around my grandfather and a week after he called me and said, hey, man, um, so your grandfather didn't really die, but he actually just died. Oh, and wow, I was like, wow. what the? Yeah, so it, it hurt me. And it, I haven't talked to him in, I just talked to him like six months ago. And it's still rocky because for him, I know it's, the poverty level is very high. It's more of like a help me. And I'm like, I just wanted my dad. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I have so many other father figures that are, willing to be my dad and I, I wanted him that are asking to be my for dad yeah. I just want to give so to how do you channel that makes it sounds like you know, you're listening to your story you've had a lot of pain yeah. in your life was it the reason why you were so attracted to the karate is because you were unleashing some of that pain that you had gone through in your life or, or looking for the discipline in it I never looked at it like that I think a lot of people can relate to an outlet that they find yeah. passionate with mm -hmm. um, we've heard about it where it's their escape. Yeah. To me, training was an escape. I, I didn't think too much of the pain. The pain was there, but I always just kind of took it and put it here. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is it would accumulate. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll have outbursts or I become emotional. And I'm like, what the heck is wrong with me? I need to control myself. And mm -hmm. I'll tuck it away again. Yeah. And I've learned from good people around me to to face these things that I have to face him and I'm like, I don't need to face him right now. Like I, I, I'm getting ready for my fight. I can't do this right now. Mm -hmm. Like I remember years ago, my girlfriend broke up with me a week before my fight. I'm like, nah, bitch, really? Now? Nah. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> I had to tuck that emotion away. And you know, in the martial arts world, it was like, okay, we, we learn integrity, honor, discipline. Yeah. And, right. and you know, to, to, to understand that life is gonna be just like training, you know, with these obstacles. And when these obstacles come, you have to learn to break through them. Mm -hmm. And I carried that over in my life. But the world that I'm in right now, such as the martial arts world or the UFC, it's, it's different. It's changing. It's evolving back in the day with the old school stuff. But now it's just changing. It's more of like a hype. Uh, what you can say. If I talk about saving kids, it's like, get out of yeah, here. But yeah, if I yeah, say yeah. F you, F you, it's like, oh, we like him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I struggle with that. And I know a lot of athletes struggle mm -hmm. because I want to be myself. I was taught to be myself. Mm -hmm. But the world is constantly changing to say, you don't want to be yourself, dude. That's boring. Right. <laughs> Give us something that we can. You got to sell detained. yourself. Yeah. So exactly. You the Conor more, yeah. sell yourself. Yeah. Make and sure I don't know how to do that. But yeah. unfortunately, yeah. and fortunately, it's how you make money these days. Mm -hmm. You know, unless I go out there and really hammer down and knock, beat the crap out of somebody. Mm -hmm. But it sucks. But yeah. I got to be yeah. me. Yeah. And that's I, I agree, because some of the fighters that I, you know, grew up watching like the stoic like just badass don't have to say anything yeah and they'll just end you like that doesn't like it's the louder the more mm. ridiculous like the diaz brothers like i respect them and i love watching them fight but it's like they're almost just a spectacle because of their personality <laughs> right yeah. and that's what it is right and they're just like no filter say whatever they want yeah. like i mean they, Conor McGregor, I wouldn't say that he was like the first one, but he definitely like upped at a level, right? Yeah. And and so like Tito Ortiz was that before. Mm -hmm. And and so I just like I agree. I wish that we could even just take a step back and say, okay, hey, look, especially in this realm, like 
let's let the ring, the octagon, let's let that speak louder than all the things that you're doing on site. Like I get yeah. it, branding, but the same thing with football, right? Yeah. It's all about like, you know, Juju, He's mm -hmm. like a good receiver. He's good. Right. He's not the best, but there was a period where he was the most popular receiver in yeah. the league because yeah. of his social media and the dances and all these yeah. like things that had yeah. nothing to do with football. And right. that's and that's how we. But that's it what up. people do. I mean, the reason why it's like that because people are going to tune in. It's like the Mayweather deal. Mayweather yeah. was pretty boy Floyd all those years <laughs> and was dominating the lightweight and then got into welterweight and he wasn't making that much money. But when he became the bad guy, yeah, and he flipped it. People wanted to tune in, but not just tune in to see him fight. They wanted to tune in to see him lose. Yeah. Yeah. And right. that's what you see with McGregor and some guys is that they've yeah. taken on the persona of I'm going to be this person and people are going to turn in like me to say, okay, I want to see his ass yeah, get knocked out. out. Yeah. Like Jake that. Paul, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Jake yes. Paul, exactly. I was like, don't buy the damn pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, man, you got the pay-per-view? Pay <laughs> I'm coming over, you know? <laughs> I ain't paying for it. Like, I ain't paying for it. If you pay for it, I'll come and watch. <laughs> <laughs> but it sells because you're like, you want to see him get his ass kicked and yeah. for the 10% of like, yeah, we want to see him win. It, right. it is yeah, what it is. Yeah, it's yeah. not going to be what it was and yeah. it shouldn't be what it's yeah. not. So take us back oh. to your first match in in karate i want to go back to yeah, first competitive you, oh, yeah. first competitive match because your your sensei basically wanted to get you out of your comfort zone yeah uh man i uh i don't remember it too much because karate uh you know we had tournaments because mm -hmm. it was like 40 something schools and we would all have this tournament every like six months but i do remember my first boxing match which was like completely outside mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I was so nervous backstage that my buddy was like, dude, we don't have to do this. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I have to do this. I was so nervous. I just felt my soul leaving my body. And mm. it was a FDNY versus NYPD. So legally, I knocked out a cop. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's too loud. So that's too loud. How did you, how did you get it? We're going uh, to cut that out. We're like, <laughs> we're doing like we're a, a cut and come back. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to cut to our sponsors legally, real quick. Legally. We'll, we'll edit that we out. We both signed waivers. He was like, listen, let's do this. Um, but my, my, my big bro, I call him, you know, he's, he taught me since uh, I first started karate. He's a, he's a sergeant in NYPD. And he, uh, again, now the father figured I said, hey, I think you should do this competition. Because I was kicking butt in the karate league, and he was like, all right, you're good, man. And my very first day of sparring, this is how I met him. Very first day, my mother was sitting down. I had my gear. I was a white belt. He was a black belt, which mm. white, blue, yellow, green, red, brown, black. Oh, you geez. know? Wow. So he had years on me, and, I mean, he beat the living daylights out of me. I didn't even know what I was doing. I remember just throwing punches. And, <laughs> but there's one thing I was good at. I didn't know how to quit. So I literally took a 30 minute butt whooping, just walking me down. I just kept coming back. And at the end, he was like, man, I've never seen someone not quit like that. And he's like, come on Sundays, I'll teach you how to box. Mm. And that's how it started. And he's responsible for my jab, you know, because mm, he made awesome. me throw a jab for seven months. I was like, can I throw right at him? <laughs> so that's how I learned. And, you know, again, I, that's when I realized that I just don't know how to quit. Mm. There are times where I'm like, I got to figure out how to quit. I got to figure out how to stop. But the com the competitiveness in me is like, you beat me a thousand times. I just mm -hmm. need one. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. give me one mm -hmm. because it won't it won't sit with me. And that's why for me right now in my career, yeah, I'm old. I'm 37, but I feel like Benjamin Button. But uh, mm -hmm. I just know if I don't uh, take care of this, it will haunt me forever. I just have to finish what I start. If I start mm -hmm. something, I have to finish. I'll be the last one, but I have to finish. Yeah. I'm saying when, when did it start turning in school? Like when did the confidence translate from the gym or from the dojo or from the, the karate the to, <laughs> is that not the right word? The karate kid, <laughs> Mr. Karate kid, you trying to act like the the dojo. Dojo. <laughs> wicked, wicked. <laughs> So you're right. And the the did you sweep the leg? <laughs> in the wax tournament. on and wax on. <laughs> but, but the, the, the heart of the question before I, <laughs> showed my ignorance there did it when did the confidence start to to come out in the everyday life man i can say literally uh a week and a half maybe two weeks of doing karate is that quick really? but it was a weird type of confidence like you know you, you get bullied in in high school and i was a, the guy that was friends with everybody i was friends mm. with the nerds the bullies the gang members i just had that personality and um 
this guy was snowing. I never forgot. It was Richmond Hill and in, in, in somewhere in Queens, Richmond Hill High School. And he was throwing snowballs. I was walking with my buddy. And he was like a super nerd. And, you know, he was hitting him with the snowballs. And just like in the movies, I was just keep walking. Because what did I tell you? You know, if a bully is bullying you, just ignore him. Yeah. So that was in my head, but my body was just not responding to that. So he kept All of a sudden, the, I was hitting him. Yeah, right? really weird. <laughs> he was hitting him with the snowballs, and then one of the snowballs hit me. And it was like these two badass dudes, right? So I, I turned around. I, I, I didn't even know what happened. I, my body just turned, and I was like, yo, what's the f- Can I curse? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. I was like, yo, what the F? You know, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> That's how I saw There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you graduated. Yeah, you came out. <laughs> hey, you're waiting. You son of a biscuit. <laughs> what the what the G Gully? <laughs> we're, we're 47 minutes in, finally Sorry. really your eyes coming out. Love it. Sorry. Uh, so I turned around right away. I was like, yo, what the fuck? And then as soon as I did that, the small voice said, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> You're going to die. You're right. <laughs> right? You and run. I turned back around, and I was, my eyes were like this, and I was like, just keep walking, bro. Just keep walking. <laughs> and something crazy happened. Those guys left us alone. Mm. And that's when I realized if you don't stand up to that bully, nothing will happen. You have right. to stand up verbally, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Physically, yes, but even more so verbally. And Later on down the road in my career of, of training and stuff, I became an instructor because I, I loved it so much. I, I, I teach children, three and four year old. You give me any three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year old, man, I will make those mofos and I'll mold them. And I don't have to yell at them because we went to school for it, too. We went to school to, to, to psychologically teach those little guys mm-hmm. for older kids and for adults, too. And at one point, you know, I had the highest numbers of retention with bringing students in anybody mm. come off the street you know i remember used to telling people hey man you're gonna die if you don't train <laughs> you know this dude was like 300 pounds and he's like yeah i want to train one time a week i'm like what no i'm not taking your money you're gonna die like give me at least three mm. like, you know what no one's ever been honest with me like that <laughs> but i can tell you stories of that but yeah, yeah it i became an instructor and i was still fighting and i, I made a very hard decision to uh, to leave teaching and and pursue the whole fighting. Granted, too, you know, I was having some um, <clears throat> arguments with the, the the gym and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and I kind of got let go. But it, it was the hardest thing to do to to stop teaching because you 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 build that relationship with them. I don't have any kids, but mm-hmm. I'm telling you, parents come to me and be like, "Hey, man, all I gotta do is mention your name. My kid is gold." <laughs> mm-hmm. So I saw so many personalities. I taught so many celebrity kids. Dave Chappelle kid was there. I, Vincent D'Onofrio, uh, Hugh, 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 Wolverine. Oh, Jackman. <laughs> Hugh Jackman was yeah. there. I was gay for like five seconds because he, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Good looking oh, man, boy, man. Boy, what just happened? <laughs> five seconds. Been there. <laughs> then I went back. I was like, oh, what's up, man? What's, what's going on? <laughs> did, did we just kiss? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> He's a great guy, man. He, he is such a cool dude. His son was such a spoiled brat. Oh. Uh, but I met, I, I met him. I, so I we're going to start people. this session off with sparring. <laughs> you and me. <laughs> we're going to throw you in the deep end. I mean, uh. <laughs> I want to take a quick break and thank our partners, Sleep Number, and highlight a couple of things they're doing. Guys, these Sleep Number beds are unreal. The technology that they've created, the feedback that it gives you on your sleep. I've got the app opened up right here. They tell you things like your heart rate, your heart rate variability, your breathing rate, all these type uh, metrics and feedback to give you so that you can improve your quality of sleep. They're all over the place. You can go and check yourself out at Sleep Number store wherever you live. Go to sleepnumber.com as well. They've got great resources on there. We just talked about this not too long ago. They have a whole blog section, all these articles, things that you can improve your health. Sleep Number is definitely changing the game when it comes to bedding. So get yourself to Sleep Number, get yourself to sleepnumber.com and check them out. Now back to the episode. Um, Let, let's let's connect the dots here. So you you two weeks in, you fill in the confidence, uh-huh. you turning things around. Where I didn't did, know what it was. I, I didn't I didn't know what that was. I felt it. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know what it was. Yeah. Where, where mm-hmm. did you go from there? You were at six, 16, 17? I was sixteen around there. Yeah, 16, yeah. 17. And, and did did grades start to improve a little bit? Did, did <laughs> nope. No. I <laughs> just I was like school, you know, and I was just I gave it so much because. Mm-hmm. For me, it was just the outlet that I always needed. It mm-hmm. was it was the one thing that I felt I was just gravitating towards, and no one was judging me. Uh, 
I was progressing. I was getting better, stronger, faster. I was learning things. I was learning things about my, my, my mind and my body. So I didn't even pay attention to that. So did you end up graduating high school or no? No, I dropped yeah. out. Mm. Um, but then when I wanted to go back to school, that's when my sensei was like, yeah, dude, you can totally do that. But I'm letting you know right now you okay. have a gift. Yeah. So that's and when you decided mm -hmm. I'm going all in. I was like, you know what? This. I'm going to go all the way yeah. in. And so you're 17 at this point, 18? 17, 18, yeah. All right. Yeah, so where there. do you go from there at 18? I just, uh, I went into uh, it's an assistant instructor. And, you know, there's a Joe shoot, then there was a Deshi, then there's a, uh, eventually became a sensei. And after sensei, there's Shion. Was like, at the Why? dojo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah but, yeah. you know, they transfer you to other places. <laughs> Martial arts gym. What do you use that? Yeah, gym. <laughs> gym works. <laughs> but even then, you know, I, I was, I was, I was homeless. I didn't, I didn't have a place. Oh. And I, I slept at the gym. And, and this is in New York City. This is no. This was in Queens. Wow. Queens, okay. Because I, I didn't really have a job. I, I didn't know anything else. I just gave it so much of my focus. Mm -hmm. Were you, were you getting paid at the time? I was kind of getting paid ish, okay. but it was like you know, I was cleaning the gym. I was doing all that stuff, that Mr. Miyagi stuff. Man. I was going to yeah. say, yeah, you that's didn't like care, straight though. movie. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. cleaning the gym. I slept in the office. Uh, I remember when it was cold, I took cold showers because they didn't have any heat. And I, I was just, I lived there. And it sucked at the time because I remember going out sometimes. I wanted to eat. I couldn't. Mm. I, I ate out of garbage. I did. Wow. And, you know, it was some low times. But something inside me said, it's not going to be forever. And I remember sitting down one time in the in the bathroom and i I was just sitting there like i, I can't do this anymore and mm -hmm. i think for everyone they have this moment where yeah. it's like you know what the new chapter is demanding a better version of me and i felt like that was a new chapter demanding a better version i didn't know what it was but i just kind of went into it and became a, a higher instructor got paid still wasn't enough my sister helped me out she gave me her studio um the commute was just long and i this was my commute I lived in Queens. So there's Queens, there's Manhattan, and then there's New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So we had to go to New Jersey every day, every day pretty much. Um, so I would get up at 6 to get to the city by like 8.40. I have to take the 8.40 bus to get to uh, New Jersey by like 9.45. Our class was from 10 Dang. to like 11.30, 12. And then I had to get back to the city by like 2. So I get there like 1.45 and... We have our meeting from two to three, maybe, and then the first class starts at four, four some four fifteen, and these are like energetic four year olds just running in. Yeah. And you're like, hey guys, <laughs> right? awesome. yeah, you're already twelve hours in. I'm done. And then this was every day for like six years straight. And then wow. I I taught those guys, and the older kids came in, and then the adults came in, and then there's the intermediate adults, and then there's the beginner adults again. So the the last class ended at like nine thirty. Mm. And then we had to have a meeting, which lasted like 11, maybe 12. Wow. So I lived all the way in Queens. So sometimes I would just sleep at the gym wow. and get up and just jump on the bus from there. I would only go home on the weekends. Mm. Looking back now, you know, like Steve Jobs said, you know, you realize how the doctor, dots are all connected. Mm -hmm. It didn't make sense. It sucked. I was like, why am I doing this? But I built this mentality to say anything is possible. I've heard people say it, but when you actually live through it, Anything is really possible. So going back to that moment, though, where you said, I can't do this anymore, and you decided to ratchet it up mm -hmm. and go even further in, why not, like, what made you want to keep going further as opposed to, I got to quit and do something else? Why not quit in that moment? I was passionate, and I think with passion, it, it's a drive force. I, even my old sensei, we don't talk. Not the guy that told me about my comfort zone, the the head of the whole organization, but he's extremely passionate. He's an old dude that's doing kicks where like, how are you doing that kick at your age, you know? So one of the main things he always talked about was uh, passion. And if you don't have it, you know, it's hard to kind of maintain or, and keep doing stuff. That's why I'm still fighting because I'm passionate about mm -hmm. it. If it was just a job, then I wouldn't train properly. I was just, you know, collect the checks, but I'm still passionate about it. I'm looking for new ways to make my body work differently. I'm outclassing younger guys where they're like, come on, old man. I'm like, all right, you only get my left hand today. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm passionate about it because I'm always looking for new ways to, to get better, to improve. And are you, are you passionate? Arts. Was there a time when you were passionate about teaching as well? Because that Oh like, my God, absolutely. Yeah. I love teaching. Mm -hmm. I, I'm doing it now. My coach is like, you need to get back to that. I'm, I have clients now. Um, but you know, for me, it's just downtime. Mm -hmm. 
because mm-hmm. I love to teach. And with kids, you know, I, I did this thing with um, Make-A-Wish. Mm-hmm. I, I taught the kids and the lady came over like, I've never seen that before. And I'm like, I actually went to school for this shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, she, we kind of partnered up or whatever. I love kids, man. I you guys love are so overpaid. They used to pay them nothing. <laughs> used to pay them nothing in Queens to do this. <laughs> the cool thing is some of my kids are getting married. Wow. And, yeah. and that, that's when you're like, oh, okay, I'm old as fuck. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. So uh-huh. I have kids hitting me up like, hey, sensei. I'm like, dude, you're a grown-ass man. You have to call me sensei anymore. He's like, oh, you're all, you're all my sensei. And they're getting married. Can you come to my wedding? I'm like, oh, my God, you're getting married? I haven't even thought about that shit yet. You yeah. getting married? So it's cool to see that them growing up with that mentality. Mm-hmm. And one of my kids is a baseball player, and he's, you know, he calls me up for advice and stuff like that. And it feels good. You know, I'm like a dad of <laughs> all these damn kids. But Right. So what is it? Because martial arts creates, um, and, you've, and you've talked about it, right? The mindset, right? Yeah. The mental toughness, right? There's like a stoicism to, especially like karate, I would say. But like, like what is it and what is the training involved? Is it intentional or does it just kind of come with, come with the training inherently of like the mental toughness? Because... I mean, you look at some of the greatest fighters, they're mentally the toughest people out there. So is it intentional? Like, hey, we're walking through this exercise or is it just the mental toughness that comes with getting punched in the face and then pushing through it? It's hard to say. I, I can, what I can say is every day is a fight for everybody. Mm-hmm. I, I think everybody is going through their own mm-hmm. battle. I mean, I'm sure each and every one of you guys yeah. right now is going through your own mm-hmm. personal fight and mm-hmm. Regardless of its pers- uh, you know, personal, outside or inside, it's gonna mold you and build you. You look at some people like, wow, how are you so mentally tough? I'm sure there was some point in his life or something happened where he had to develop mm-hmm. that mindset. And I feel that's the case for a lot of these people. A lot of people are like, how could you do that? How could you go in there and take punch to the face? And I'm like, I had no choice. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't have the mindset or the skill set to do this, but I gravitate toward this. And this taught me this, mm-hmm. where this will teach you this. So it, it's different for everybody else mm-hmm. for what they have to go through to, mm-hmm. to get them to that place, I can say. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get into, let's just fast forward and get into the mixed martial arts all together mm-hmm. because you were training in karate, mm-hmm. you, were, you were teaching at the same time. What was the catalyst that said, okay, I need to move on and actually compete in the, in the cage? Um, I was undefeated as a kickboxer and I was getting bored. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, because as a martial artist, you, you, there's challenges that make you feel like you're improving. It's, it's a never ending journey for a martial artist. You know, mm. if you take away like ranks, wins, losses. That's what we that's how you think, because it's a journey. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about this journey. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm too comfortable here and I need to step outside my comfort zone. And MMA was kind of, you know coming around and stuff like that. And okay, well, let me go back then. So you, you went through, you were competing yeah. in karate Kickbo- before. In karate. It, it it was karate before. and kickboxing, yeah. Okay, yeah. so when did you start doing the kickboxing? When did that start? Oh, uh, I mean, the, the from a business standpoint, the way my gym operated was, okay, I think the economy was changing and stuff, so we changed from karate to kickboxing because karate mm-hmm. was just kind of old school. Uh, some of the stuff didn't work. It was kind of like, all right, that shit ain't going to work in real mm-hmm. life. So mm-hmm. would kickboxing <laughs> turn into more of a cardio base? You know, soccer moms, they love no, that No, no, shit. no, I need you in this position here. So let, me, <laughs> let, me gra- <laughs> let, me, let me grab your gear real quick. Hold on. Okay, it's great now we're for good. kids. It's <laughs> yeah, great yeah. for kids yeah, because sure. it developed that discipline mentality. Uh, yeah. But for adults, they were looking for something more fundamental. Yeah. So hitting a bag, you know, or, or sparring each other or sweating and doing push-ups and all that stuff and feeling like you're achieving goals. Mm-hmm. So they moved towards that market side, that market mm-hmm. side, right? So like- And what year are we talking here? Ish. Probably around 2008 or right okay. before that. Okay. I think when uh, gotcha. that thing happened. Yeah, <laughs> the first one. But yeah, when they started <laughs> yeah. to change that, then we just kind of went with it. Okay, yeah. so then so then it kind of evolved into, because you were a second degree black belt yeah. already at that point? I was point? due for my third. Third, so okay. Technically a third. How many degrees okay. are there? Again, I'm an ignorant. I think there's 10. There's different oh, countries. Wow. Like mm, Japan yeah. has like 14 or some shit. Uh, wow. Yeah, like, What's the one where you get a samurai sword with it? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I haven't achieved that rank yet. I haven't achieved it. All right, but so it's, it's funny because <laughs> when I was a, a, a brown or red belt, I remember yeah. looking at black belt. Like, and I, I, in my mindset, and this is how powerful the mind is, and my sensei again, I was at the tournament and, and I'm like, man, these black belts are awesome. And he's like, I want you to go in that tournament 
bracket with the black belts. I'm like, Sensei, no, these guys are black belts. They'll kill me. Mm. And he was like, dude, that belt don't mean shit. Mm. It's what you know of here. Uh. And I went in there and I was schooling everybody. And I'm like, how are you a black belt, dude? Because in my <laughs> mind, you know, you're a yeah. god. You're a black belt. Are you yeah. talking but, shit? Yeah, you had to be talking shit. I was like, bro, step your game up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, I was young. I was, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. What were you saying? No, no, no. That's it. Much better direction. <laughs> but the mind is powerful, man, because you start to say, oh, I don't belong there, or yeah. Yeah. this is way better than me. And then you psych yourself out without even realizing yeah. that you have attributes <laughs> that you haven't used yet. Yeah. yeah. I, and my story is a little similar. Darren was a little different because I think Darren knew from an early age, like, I belong there. Like, I'm, I'm a badass. Whereas I wasn't. I'm, I was the same deal when I was you know in the arena league and the cfl and all these deals i'm like dude these nfl guys it's a whole nother level yeah. like i don't belong in the same locker yeah. room as those guys and then you get there and you hit them yeah. in the mouth and you're like oh, oh you're, you're a human being like, too you're just, <laughs> you're, just, you're just a dude too you're just a dude you're just a third oh, you degree black man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which is which is so crazy like and and i and I think that people in every aspect of life, whether it's a job, right? Like you're an associate and you come into a new firm and you look at these vice presidents like, oh my gosh, these dudes are the smartest dudes on the planet. Yeah. Or the CEO, like he is way smarter and way more gifted. It's like, no, no. they're that's jacked up dudes, yeah. people too. Nobody has yeah. it together, man. And Nobody. so, I mean, that's, and that's really cool that like your sensei pushed you there because. Yeah. Credit to that guy, man. So, yeah. all right, so you go through, you make kind of the transition from tr traditional karate to kickboxing. That was, it, I mean, your build, if, you, if you've not seen Uri in person, he's long and just like <laughs> built like a kickboxer. So, and I've if you've ever seen him fight, he's got some gnarly all right. kicks. Yeah, I'm all right. But okay, so you you're we're like, gonna actually right. do a demo when we're done to yeah, 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 so, yeah. on, on Darren. Yeah, <laughs> Darren's quads. <laughs> I love how they just voted you. <laughs> Darren, how's that? How those abs I'm only, working? I'm the only badass. <laughs> so, when you made that transition, did you like gravitate more towards now like this traditional kickboxing? Like, are you looking at like the Muay Thai? Like, what was there? Was there an increased? Uh, I don't know. Uh, interest in the the kickboxing side of it oh um, initially yeah because i'm i'm naturally uh, dynamic i yeah. like to do stuff like you see in the movies mm -hmm. yeah and video games because that's where my creativity comes from uh -huh. and with mma guys want to be like oh shit i ain't gonna do that they yeah. you know start yeah. grabbing me and i'm like what the f can we fight like men what are yeah. we doing and <laughs> a lot of my opponents started doing that and i'm like all right there's a there's a hole here i gotta i gotta work my grappling yeah I remember submerging myself to a wrestling place. Just, uh, I hate wrestling. The whole hugging and laying there and shit. One of the toughest sport ever, but God, get off of me. Because I like to punch and kick and move. But I had to step outside my comfort zone again mm -hmm. to just understand the baseline. I knew I'm not going to be the best wrestler, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to know my defense where I can get back to my comfort zone mm -hmm. yeah. where I'm good at. And I did the same thing with grappling. And I tell you what, your entire story has been sprinkled with getting out of your comfort zone. That's like the theme of your life. Yeah, that's exactly is it. Out of your comfort zone every Constantly. step of the way. Because life, I personally feel life is, it's all, it's happening. That's how I look at it. And you either happen with it or you happen without. Mm -hmm. It's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, I will never get this moment back. I leave, there'll be another moment. Mm -hmm. I look at happiness as moments. Like when someone says, I want to be happy, like what is that? What does that mean? happiness is moments you can think back to when you were a kid or you spend with your wife or your yeah, sibling whatever it's moments it, yeah. those are what makes you happy it doesn't last and that's why we hold on to it mm -hmm. but that's what those true happiness to me comes from and i hold on to that yeah we talked about this a few weeks ago tyler it's it's the effort paradox it's mm -hmm. you know like effort takes effort and yeah. as is implied and it sucks and it hurts and it's costly yeah but there's so much value in it too yeah and going through something that takes effort is, init is, is innately more rewarding than if something's just handed to you. Exactly, yeah. And so that's what you figured that out early. Yeah, I felt like I had no choice, too, because right. I didn't have any. I was looking like, oh, shit, I, I got to find my own. And it, it's weird, man. I mean, there were times where I'm like, why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. But now, you know, I, I remember not. I got my license at 29. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we don't drive in New York. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. But... You know, I have the option of having a car to to having a second car, and I just have that option. I remember I was worried about what I'm going to eat. So the, these struggles, depending on what they are for everyone else, because we're all we're all doing our best, I think, mm -hmm. in our own way of what we think, mm -hmm. and most of the time is what we were taught. Mm -hmm. 
right. whether it's from older generations saying this is the way and we've used to that because i had an argument to give you a story with a gentleman in the uh, in the pool uh we're talking about homosexuals and he was saying that can i talk about that you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you go and ahead and go down that road <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I, think, I, I think we already talked you about can, it you already opened the door with uh, you can oh, kick shit, you can you can kick 99.9 percent of people's asses so uh, you can yeah. talk about whatever you want <laughs> but uh <laughs> But uh, his, his argument was, and I don't even know how the hell this conversation started. His argument was, yeah, you know, uh, if you were born like that, then then you, you're supposed to change. And I'm like, what? I'm like, I don't think, I mean, if you're born gay, then that's who you are, bro. Like, let him be gay. And he was yeah. like, no, nah, God don't condone this. I'm like, you know, there's like a lot of guys, right? Like, you, there's like 12 more. <laughs> like, what are you right. talking about? What, which one are you talking about? And I was so upset and I was like, dude, like, let someone be who they are. Who are you to take someone's choice away mm -hmm. from being who they are? That's like me saying, oh, man, I was born black. I, I got to change white. Like, yeah. I was born this way. I have to be comfortable with my skin. If that's what you want, as long as you're not hurting anybody. And that was my argument. Mm, preach. And my, my, my girlfriend at the time, slash, I don't know what we are, slash, we're confused at the moment. <laughs> we, you know, she kind of spoke to, to me. <laughs> but I love her to death. We... <laughs> <laughs> love you baby <laughs> oh i'm gonna get slapped but <laughs> she said to me listen you gotta understand this person was raised this way yeah so that's the mentality that's the environment you're used to so even though you don't agree with them at least listen to understand because i always say this i always say listen to understand don't listen to reply mm -hmm. and i was not doing what i preach which was to listen to understand where this person is coming from that okay that's a different world that you brought up let me explain where i was brought up and what i think yes. and then at some point we can do this yeah. because again he believes in his best way of what he thinks while i'm over here and we both believe that it's right right but it's for us yeah. to kind of do this which i think we should be doing with this whole politic bullshit yeah, 100%. yeah. yeah and that's what's that's what's hard and we talk about this uh right now and i keep pointing at ben because Darren only shows up when Uriah shows up. <laughs> so, it, I ain't showing up. Notice the swag in. we got. <laughs> it's thing, man. I'm trying to tell these dudes. <laughs> Both just came from an SMU rally. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, well, hey, what but, fraternity are But you're right. Like, when conversations, like, it has to be a two-way street, mm -hmm. right? And, and when we, and it's hard because when someone says something that we disagree with and they believe something that we wholeheartedly believe is wrong, yeah. We automatically, I think, naturally kind of feel attacked and have to defend our own thoughts. Yes. Yeah. And and it sounds like that's what you're saying is like uh, because same thing like so I have two gay brothers and I was raised a certain way to think something and I think differently today than I did when I found out my first brother was gay and then when my second brother was gay. I feel completely different now mm -hmm. where I, because I've because I've actually I've listened to yeah. the other side mm -hmm. right and I was raised a certain way but. When, when you can listen to understand and then you hope that the other person will then do the same. The hard part is, is when they don't. Yeah. And, but that's when I just shut down and I'm like, all right, yeah. this, mm -hmm. this conversations, it's not worth having yeah. because, mm -hmm. because again, it's just wasted. It's wasted oxygen. Now you're just trying to prove your point. That's that, right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but yeah, but like, yeah. have you listened to me? Do you get where I'm coming from? Are, are you trying to understand? Are you actually even asking me questions? Right. Or, and not just questions to like set you up to say something wrong so that you can rebuke them right exactly and so that's what I, I agree with you i think right now like these conversations that that we need to have are okay hey i would actually just like to understand more yeah and i would like to have this conversation in a way that it's like okay i'm gonna give you your space mm -hmm. and i'm not just i'm gonna listen and try to understand where you come from why you believe that Okay, it may be completely different, but guess what? That's why we live here, and that's why this country was is supposed to be amazing. We're not yeah. in that time right now <laughs> yeah. because we feel like if someone says something we disagree with, whichever way it is, right, <laughs> yeah. on all sides, if you say something, I feel like you're attacking me. Yeah. And we're going through this book right now, The Coddling of the American Mind. It's, it's all about this idea that we now as a country and the, especially the younger generation because of the coddling we feel like hey if you believe something differently or you say something whether the intent is to harm me or not if you say something that i disagree with it's an attack and i need to shut you down right mm. and it's just it's unfortunate because we're missing out on so many uh, beautiful conversations that can happen that can bring people together but now it's dividing yeah, yeah. And, and that was deep yeah. that was really deep but you know what all that was said and 
I didn't know that you had two gay <laughs> gay brothers. I'm like, I saw you picked up. That's <laughs> all I got. Get to know, get to know your friend here. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? I'm no title, bro. <laughs> that shit was deep right there. And I was like, okay, I heard two gay brothers. That's, that's what I heard. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, man. It's like watching uh, Telemundo, the Spanish people. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, like, uh-huh. I thought it was Lindsay Lohan. I thought it was Lindsay Lohan. I know Spanish. I, I, Lohan. <laughs> I speak Spanish. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Man. Oh, man. man. God. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Derek. <laughs> I appreciate it. Get us back on track, Tyler. <laughs> Uriah, you bring this shit out of me, man. <laughs> this is all your fault. Uh, <laughs> he was talking. I, I, I was like, wow, that's really. Yeah, usually deep. when I start talking, his eyes start glazing over. And he just <laughs> starts to fade a little uh, bit. Well, that's the thing these days. I personally uh, think, you yeah. know, a lot of people aren't keeping it real. Mm, it's it's yeah. so important to keep it real. Like, if you don't like me, then, yeah, there's a reason we can dive into it. But if my energy doesn't make you feel of comfortableness for whatever purpose, then we don't have to be here, you know? That's right. And it's being honest with yourself first. Be like, you know what? This is who I am. This is what I like. This is what I want. Right. And believe it or not, I should take my own damn advice because I give the best relationship advice. (laughs) I cannot take that shit from my own. But I've I've always said to my friends who call me, I'm like, listen, bro, you got to be honest with yourself first before you can be honest mm-hmm. with the other person. I think that will allow that communication to, to broaden. It's like, this is what I like. This is how I feel. This is what I think. What do right. you think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. and that exchange could go this way. It's not, and I heard someone say, you know, you don't get 50-50 in a relationship. It's 100 and 100. Fuck am I holding on to 54? You know, I got to yeah. give you all of me, and I expect that as well. And that's another that's topic. That's true, man. <laughs> yeah. That is so true. Oh, no, it's I, true. I love it. So, um, Fights. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of gay, so, uh, <laughs> all right, talk us talk us through though how like your transition into the UFC. I mean, was it was it something that you're like, okay, this is oh. starting to grow in popularity, or did someone say, hey, you're right, you got to go, you got to go? This is a great story. Um, I lost my job. I was a full time instructor, and I didn't know how I was going to make ends meet. Mm-hmm. I was dating this uh, g- girl. God. She worked for Ernest and Young. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You are. Yeah, she's banking. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't feel like a man having a woman pay for me, you know? And <laughs> she was like, don't worry about it. She was French too. She's responsible for my outfits, you know? She came to my house. She's like, Uriah, you're an athlete. What are you wearing? <laughs> this is a clothes, babe. She's like, you should never shop at Old Navy again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, she, 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 she wanted to help me out, but I, I just couldn't, I don't know, my pride or whatever. I was like, mm-hmm. I got it. I, I figure it out. And one day I was laying on the bed and I got this email from this MMA website. I said, Hey man, season 17 of the ultimate fighter, ultimate fighter, uh, is coming up. I think you should definitely try out and do it. And I was like, thank you, God. You yeah. know, this is yeah. out of the blue. Cause I, yeah, it was, oh. it was just a, a Facebook message. And back then, you know, you have to fight to get in the house. Mm-hmm. And, uh, even prior to that, I was looking for a job. It was hard because that's all I knew for years, martial arts. Mm-hmm. And when I got that message, I, I I went online. I called my sister, and I bought a one-way ticket because I had no way of coming home. I was like, I have to make it. Mm. If I don't make it, I'm, I have to beg on the street. That's what I was thinking. I was like, wow. there was, I, I didn't set up a security blanket. There's no plan B. I was like, this is what we're gonna you do. know, Apollo, there is no tomorrow. You know, I was right. like, this is it. And I went out there to the uh, the tryouts. There was literally over 800 people. And I was like, holy shit. So 800 other people got the same email. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're here too? You got it from Ben, right? <laughs> um, but man, so many personalities. Uh, man, uh, you know, the tryouts consist of throwing punches, showing you grappling skills, and a bunch of other stuff. And the last part was the interview. This is the best part. Um, and one of my buddy, Gilbert, who I made friends with at the time. Again, I don't know how this conversation started. I'm doing a coming to America accent because I told him that's the first movie I ever saw. And I think everybody should watch coming to America before they come to America. And he was like, bro, you got to do that accent when you go in there. I'm like, dude, this is the interview. I am not trying to fuck this up. He's like, bro, they want personality. Trust me. And we're back and forth. And I took a risk. 
No and, way. you know, they keep letting people go, like either background checks or whatever. So the last part was the interview. I walked in. You know, <laughs> I had my Eddie Murphy smile like this. I was not in my head. And I see the producer sitting by the, with the papers like, all right, so uh, Mr. Hall. Yes. You know? <laughs> I'm like, so uh, tell us about yourself. Well, you know, I came here a long time ago. I'm going to win this show. And I, this... This kept going, you know, to ask no questions. Oh Are they God. looking at you like, okay, he's really tall? Like, no, they're looking at me trying not to laugh. Oh, so yeah. they're, like, they're, like, so they're, no. they're like, who is this fresh off the boat motherfucker right now? You know, and this went on for five minutes. And when the questions got a little deeper, I was like, I'm just kidding, guys. And the whole room was like, what the fuck? That's not your voice? No way. And I was like, no, I was just decided to play a prank. And the, he was like, man, that was really good. I like this guy. And that, that got me in. Yeah. 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 I think wow. that got me in. Yeah, so that's such a part. I pretended to be fresh off the boat. Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it started worked. with eight hundred. Oh, How man. many did they whittle it down to? Oh man! So at the end of the night, you know, I, first of all, the tryout started at seven. We ended around one thirty, close to two. Mm. So the whole day was just tryouts mm. and. I remember sitting down and he gave a little speech. Listen, you know, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for coming out. If we didn't call your name, don't think you suck or anything. It just means blah, 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 blah. And they're calling names and they got to 10. I was like, okay. They got to, I think they only called 60. They're like, we only want 60 mm. out of 800. And they got to 15. And I'm like, by then I'm like, all right, dude. I'm already giving up. Mm. And they uh. got to 20 and I'm like, all right, I guess I got to go back on the street to gather up some money. And I think I was number 23. Oh. Jordan, sponsor me. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think I was number 23, and I, I, my eyes lit up and wow. stuck us in a room with a contract that thick. Like, oh. sign your life away. Yeah. We sign, will. You didn't read. No, we didn't even read it. We didn't read shit. <laughs> like, huh, right here, you own me? Okay. <laughs> but, you know, I was young. I didn't have anything. And... Right after that, you know, they put us in a hotel, they did some medical work, they did some more background checks. Uh, a bunch of other folks got let go again. And I mean, I was alone for the first time in my life. Mm. I think that's when I had that real change mm. because they wanted, they asked you, you can invite people to watch you. None of my families could have made it. My best friend could have made it, but then he had to cancel. So I was literally there by myself. Wow. I had, the, the, the stand had families. And I had nobody. nobody. And I was like, shit, I'm alone for the first time. And I locked in. I zoned in. And uh, I, I won the fight and I got in the house. And wow. throughout that whole seven week, just alone in this uncomfortable. Who was in your corner at that time? Uh, just the, they It had, was Chael Sonnen and John Jones. Okay. okay. So right. It was those opposite team. And right. I wanted to be on John Jones' team. Right. Because I was like, John Jones, you know, yeah, he's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, man, pick me, pick me, pick me. And I ended up getting picked by Chael. You mm. know, Chael was just funny, controversial, all that stuff. Yeah. And it couldn't have been the best thing that ever happened to me. Chael really spoke to me the way how I felt I needed to be spoken to. Because for years, it was like a drill sergeant with my coaches. Blah, 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 and I shut down naturally. Mm. And, you know, they would say, oh, you're a bitch. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm a bitch if I shut down, if you're yelling at me. So I thought something was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And he's like, dude, no, everyone is different. You just have to be spoken to differently. And he yeah. was like, all right, I just want to keep your hands up, move your head, <clears throat> stay off the bottom. That's it. Ba -ba -ba. And all my fights were just clean cut because there was no pressure. And everything, everything I went to him with, because you know the old school, no excuse, blah, blah, blah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh. There, uh, there isn't, you can't lose. And I remember saying that to him. He's like, yeah, you can lose. I'm like, no, no I, I can't. He's like, yeah, you can lose. We're not trying to lose, but you can lose. And the moment I acknowledge that, it, I'm liberated oh, from wow. it. Oh, yeah. And I went out there with no pressure. I, I killed everybody. So he couldn't have been the best thing that ever happened to me. We still talk. Great guy. So, yeah, so to orient you. ourselves yeah. just time-wise, you're how old and then what year is this? I was 28. 28. Okay. Um, and were you were, uh, like older in the house? And then did you guys, uh, so you, you go through, you fight in, and then do you guys all live in a house? For those that haven't seen the show. Yeah, we all live in a house, yeah. like a mansion house. Uh, I mean, like we had a yard, we had a hot tub, a pool, and you know there was unlimited food. Mm -hmm. That's alcohol. a long way from the street, right. man. Yeah, they yeah. they wanted drama, but again, nothing was scripted. Um, I mean, a game of checkers because the only brothers on the 
We show know how to play, play chess. Checkers. Yeah. We know how to play chess. You know, all the white dudes are playing chess. Like, you know how to do this? We're like, fuck you, man. <laughs> What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You know how to play chess? No. So <laughs> they like drama. So we're playing checkers. And I don't know if you play, you know, checkers. Yeah. You know, if you have a king, you can do whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I think I had two king and the, my buddy had one. And we were back and forth. I could ch- trap him. And he was like, all right, this game is done. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We ain't done. Again, I'm very competitive. And he's like, well, we got to we gotta call a forfeit. I'm like, no, well, then I win because I have two kings. He's like, no. And this was back and forth, and the camera came out like this. <laughs> and then, <laughs> this, the, this, the, what, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so right when, right when we kind of left the scene, one of the producers came up and said, hey, you're right, man. We got to have a little interview about the game. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, we got to talk about it. I'm like, come on, man. You don't look at us two black ass. Yeah. Really? That's what you're doing to us? And he's like, it's good for the camera, man. I'm like, God. Yeah. So I had to talk about checkers and <laughs> why yeah. I felt like I should have won. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. But it's good for TV, you yeah. know? Yeah. For the drama. Yeah. yeah. Everything yeah. was edited. When I knocked out Adam Stella, he was out for like 10, 15 minutes, I think. And oh, wow. It, mm. The camera cut to my face right away. And they're like, oh, Uriah was so, so devastated. Like, yeah, motherfucker, after 10 minutes, you didn't get up. I thought I was going to jail. Yeah. I went to Dana. I was like, hey, uh, am I going to jail? He's like, what? No, you, you signed a contract. You're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you don't think he's dead, right? Like, I thought I killed him because mm, it was man. so bad. Wow. But the power of editing, they just cut to my face and my reaction. But that was after 10 minutes where yeah. I was like, and I apologized too. I was like, I'm sorry, Adam. And that became a slogan. Uriah apologized after knocking his opponents out. Mm. <laughs> and then for years, people said I had a mental blockage. And I just kind of found out I had this thing better. I think I was telling you guys. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Better thalasmia, whatever. And where your red belt cells don't produce enough oxygen or whatever. Mm. And with that, you get tired quick, and me getting tired quick, I panic, because I'm like, wait, I'm in shape. Mm. So when I panic, that brings in anxiety. So mm. it's like a transition. So when I get anxiety, what does anxiety do? It pulls all your energy, and then oh. I freak out even more, and then I underperform. And I was like, something is wrong with me, I just don't know what. Mm. And I, the media is the first. Yeah, this is what's wrong with you. Oh, okay, I guess so. But if yeah. to do my research and stuff, but even then I can't give it too much power, because I'm not going to be like, well, that's what I have, and that's the reason, you know. I still right. have to be a, a warrior to be like, okay, that's fine, but I'm going to utilize that to make sure I'm even better to improve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Walk us through, okay, so you go through the show. Yeah. <clears throat> and forgive me, because I, I did not watch that season. I'm going to watch the car. <laughs> Best season ever. It is. I, right. I'm going to go back. I literally am going to go back and watch that show. <laughs> but um, so you, you get through the show. Yeah. When you – actually have your first official ufc fight right Ooh, yeah like you're on the card you're in there walk us through that moment like, scared to death who are you walk, fighting who's first i think it was chris lieben oh yeah that mm-hmm. was his last fight what color hair did he have on this fight red red okay <laughs> yeah right. and uh they do that you know they'd be like all right we want to get rid of this guy yeah and they'll do that they're, they're probably trying to do it to me right now <laughs> but um <laughs> you know i lost I think I lost. No, I lost two fights. I lost the finale to Kelvin, mm-hmm. which is another story because my my team at the time wanted to take advantage of me. The team that fired me, I didn't have a gym when I got out the house, mm-hmm. and I went back just to train and stuff. And uh, they were taking all this advantage. Like, let's make uh, a documentary, which turned out to be like a, a slogan for their company. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. like, I thought a documentary is longer than five minutes, you right. know, <laughs> and. <laughs> basically used me and right. wanted me to sign a contract that gave him 33 and three third percent i'm no mathematician but you might as well take half uh-huh. and nothing was really said it was like we'll take care of you I'm like what does that mean you so know? they were going to be your manager yeah but that's hmm. what the contract said right. hounding me like two three weeks prior before the fight i'm trying to focus on the biggest right mm-hmm. yeah and i almost signed it and i was talking to my buddy he's like dude do not sign it let a lawyer read it my good friend Jenny, who got Bill Cosby out of another. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Um, <laughs> she read it and she's like, oh, dude, you cannot do this. They own you for five years. You have no say and you've pretty much given them your life. Mm. And mm. me not signing it was like saying an F you to them, even though they fired me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even though I did so well and they tried to capitalize on that. And 
they say that I left the organization for money. That's the story mm -hmm. because everybody from the organization thought I left for money. Mm -hmm. But once everybody started leaving yeah, the organization. Yeah, your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Because yeah, you wanted your money. Yeah, they want, but no one really knows the truth. They just thought that I was a deserter. I just left them and say F you because I wanted more money here. Mm -hmm. But they don't know that they really tried to screw me under the table. Wanted me to tweet shit out in the back before my fight. I'm getting rid of the fight. The fuck am I worried about Twitter for? Right, to tweet right. out my, my shirts for sales. Right. So they were using this as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it sounds like there's a lot of drama surrounding that. Oh, yeah. Was any part of you able to reminisce and think back to your time as a teenager coming to the, getting beaten? Like, did any of you have any time to look back on your life and think, I made it, I did it, I accomplished what I wanted to do here? I think as human beings, it's hard for us to be satisfied. You know, that's mm -hmm. why there's a next TV that's better. It's a better camera than that. There's a better mic coming out. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so as Jay with our mics. This <laughs> <laughs> is great. Yours has actually been turned off all the time. So. <laughs> but uh J. Cole said it the best, you know, love yours. You know, I I, I yeah. another cool story. Yeah. I, I have a challenger, Dodge Challenger and badass muscle cars a little loud. It's aggressive. It says Uriah. Mm -hmm. And then I have a Volvo. <laughs> An XC ninety, which is a great car. And I hated Volvos, you know, I wanted to get a second car and wanted a, a GLE and this guy convinced me to get a Volvo. And I sold the Challenger and I was going to sell the Volvo too. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to invest in this thing. Huh. And I started to invest in it, man, and change the, the, the uh, tinted a little bit and just changing the whole theme of it and for me it was more of just love love what i have because mm. we hear so much the grass is really green on the other side but what about nourishing what you really have and it was a point in my life where i didn't have anything mm -hmm. and yes you know it's good to want that more but if we're not aware of it it will overtake us because mm -hmm. then then it gets to a point where you're not happy anymore that's when people's yeah. like money don't buy happiness uh i kind of need money to travel <laughs> so i can be happy <laughs> right so it's how you look at it yeah, yeah. yeah. because i mean yeah, it's it's i'm sure you, you you have your first fight leaving you won your first fight yeah yeah okay so he quit of course yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you're in that moment it's probably it's what it sounds like is you're like okay i try to appreciate it but it's like all right now i want the next yeah, one you want, the, I want next. the next one mm -hmm. and i want the next the one, next one. Yeah. but i think to ben's question is like was there even a moment it was like this is pretty damn cool like i'm here talking to rogan and he's interviewing <laughs> me after the fight no and you're so caught you're up. ready up you're ready you for were the next caught one. up and no what yeah i was yeah. caught up and i'm not done yeah. even yeah. right yeah. now i'm like yeah. i'm not done yeah. Yeah. and it's a problem because <laughs> I'm not settled. It's good and bad. It's good because there's work to be done. It's bad if I let it overtake me. So I'm aware of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good to be it's like an alcoholic. You have to be aware. Yeah. And once you're aware, you're like, oh, okay, this is what I'm really doing. Mm -hmm. Now I see what I'm doing. Yeah. Maybe when I knocked out Gegard Musasi, who was ranked number six, and I was ranked number 25, I was supposed to lose that fight. Mm -hmm. I flew to Japan on three weeks notice. Mm -hmm. We're actually good friends now. And Again, he had his entourage, like seven dudes, and it was just me and two of my coaches. Mm. So we were supposed to lose that, and I did a spectacular jump spin and back kick, knocked him out, and he was even he was like, it's a fluke, because he couldn't even believe it. Mm. And, you know, I, it still didn't hit me, because I was like, I'm not done, I'm not done. It's work to be done. There's, you know, 10 more people in front of me. Mm. And my buddy was like, you know you're ranked number 10 in the world. Yeah, but I'm not done. I just, and he's like, bro, number 10. Mm. in the world mm. and it was right then and there i slowed down and i was like oh shit mm. oh, okay it, it, right that was the only moment i can think of where i was like oh i'm kind of there right but in my mind i'm like there's still work to be done yeah. yeah yeah so talk us through like right now you're in camp what what is that what is camp life like like what are you you cut out you doing everything. daily what do you you know you just yeah. train like in the morning train two hours like from like 9 to 12 and then even that train like 8 so we try to get acclimated to the fight time mm -hmm. around 8 and it's brutal like tonight I have training at 8 and it's gonna be brutal yeah mm -hmm. it's just getting up he's putting heavy weights on me I gotta get up I gotta uh utilize what we're gonna do because this guy's gonna hug me mm -hmm. um and afterwards I'm gonna hit the back because I'm the guy I'm the guy that says I have more to give when I have nothing yeah mm -hmm. psychologically it helps me to push me forward and I have an early 9 a.m session 8 a.m session then then 9 to 10 and then again at 8 but it's just grueling and yeah. in the course of that you do recovery it's just staying leveled you cut out right now i'm cutting out my sugar which means you know i'm 
crackhead. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, uh, you, you, you cut I, I cut out sex. I cut out Whoa. like. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> now. I mean, this far, it's, you got it's, July it's, 2nd, it's, right? Yeah, but it's the longer it's a little better for, for the testosterone to, to get me a little more focused for one. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like not eating. You know, the more you don't eat it, it sub subconsciously bring you close to Neo from the Matrix, I think. Because mm -hmm. when I don't eat, I feel like the one. <laughs> right. um, but I cut that out because it, it's, 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 to me, it's a distraction of what I need to do. Right. Mm. And it's just staying clean. It's not easy, of course, because there's temptation. Right. And I'm, I'm not, you know, going to sit here and say I'm, you know, not guilty. But my main focus is to focus on the, the, the craft at hand. So yeah. I cut out the distraction, sugar, sex, hanging around certain people, even drinking, yeah. uh, eating late, um, overeating. So it's getting really strict. About as far as your training protocol, how in the weeds are you on what you're doing in training, or do you leave it all up to your coach and – you just my show up every day and you just, you just there. They have great communication. You know, my, my strength coach, Mike Skasha, he's just, he gets my body really well. Mm -hmm. I work with them for like two years now. And I, I literally feel like close to God. I'm not, I'm not God, just close to God. <laughs> so I feel <laughs> strong. Um, my, my MMA coach, Safe Saoud, he's just, you know, he's got that old school mentality. Like we're going to fucking kill him, put our feet under our necks and yeah. bleed motherfucker. You yeah. know, so. <laughs> You know, he'll, he'll push me there from a mental standpoint. But I already have that. But yeah. sometimes I'm like, all right, I'll go through it. But it's just those two. And we go over stuff we need to do. Okay, he's a lefty. What do we stay away from? Are you okay, watching what's our go-to? I haven't yet. You haven't yet? Okay. <laughs> I probably should start, but yeah. I love a challenge. Mm. I, I love a challenge like that because to me, if I can beat you without knowing anything about you, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> it's good to have one thing. Like when I fought Gay Guard in Japan... I was like, this guy's ranked number six in the world. He has 46 fights. What the fuck can I do to him? And I'm mm. watching his fight. I'm like, where's his hole? And a guy named Machida fought him. Yeah, Machida, yeah. yeah. So yeah, when yeah. Machida fought him, Machida's a karate guy. Yeah. So he's very like this, twitchy. So I noticed he kept ducking like this. Like when Machida does something, he'll duck like to his right. And I was like, oh, I just got to get him to flinch. So that was my mindset. Just get him to flinch. I pick huh. one thing. And I went like this, and he flinched, and I jumped spinning back kick, and he just ducked right Just through. like that. Mm. So I picked one thing. Even when I fought Chris Weidman, who I hope he's doing a better job, mm -hmm. I broke his leg. Uh, backstage, I'm looking at him before the way ins and I'm like, man, he's got some skinny-ass leg. Mm. I'm sure if I kick the shit out of him, I'll break him. I remember saying this. Wow. Mm. So when we got in there, I watched his fights, and I was like, he's a strong wrestler. He's got heavy hand. What does he do? What's his common thing? And I noticed before Every fight, he kicks. He kicks. Mm. That's his feel-out process. He kicks. And I'm like, all right, he's going to kick. So I just got to brace and counter. Brace and counter. So I was thinking, brace and counter. So I was thinking, he's going to kick. Brace and counter. And I kind of stood up in a way where I allowed him to feel comfortable. Yeah. And when he did, right before I could do that, his leg just wrapped around my... Yeah, you didn't throw like, a punch. That's the fight you no. never... You did, yeah. Wow. Easiest money yeah. I ever made. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So see, what, what, see, here you are saying you don't know how to play chess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 real life chess. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So that's what, actually pretty good. <laughs> what are you thinking back in the locker? Like they're about to call your name. What's going through your mind at this point? Are you? I know for me, you I'm like, music? What, what are you fuck? doing? I'm saying, what the fuck am I doing, doing here? Yeah. I could be yeah. home playing video games. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everybody handles it differently. Somebody just get excited. But what I've learned is to <clears throat> take the pressure off myself. I put so much pressure on myself mm. that I forget to be in the moment. Mm. I'm living in the outcome so much that I underperform. Mm. And I've been training myself to be more here <clears throat> because this is all you got right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I'm doing right now. Just be more present. So when do those nerves calm? And is it after that first, you know, like in football, that first hit, that first play, that's kind of when you settle down, you forget about the crowd, you forget about mm. everything. Sometimes it same, takes a while. Sometimes it takes a little while. When, when does that happen in fight? Uh, depending on the yeah because yeah. i know when i fought anderson silva who was my idol that was the hardest thing ever mm. i was fine mm. but after you know my coach was like dude there's gonna be a point where you you look at anderson you're gonna be like oh fuck that's anderson, it's anderson. and i'm yeah. like yeah, yeah yeah and i remember walking around i looked at him and he did a spider pose and i was like oh 
fuck. <laughs> like, I remember that That's moment. Anderson. That's Anderson. That's <laughs> Anderson. He's doing a spider pose up in front of him. I can't get out. He's fighting me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, the, the guy's my idol. I, he was the first guy that I saw, and I said, I want to be like that guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, fighting him, I, it took me a while because I was like, shit, I don't want to hurt him. And I was like, it's Anderson. I was, you know, in that yeah. it's Anderson Silva. And I don't want to, you know, because I respect him so much. And maybe towards round two, the end, I was hesitant for most of the fights because I was battling myself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I saw some openings Thanks. and my body just reacted. And afterwards, my coach was like, don't you fucking cry. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. But, dude, let me tell you, that after that fight, the, the respect factor showed. Oh, man. I was. It balling, absolutely man. showed afterwards. I, I remember you balling. being on your, on your knees. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I loved it. It was hard. It was like hitting yeah. your dad. I was like, I'm sorry, yeah. dude. Well, that's, that's the yeah. weird thing about that sport because, uh, Darren, I don't know who you looked up to when you were playing, but yeah. <clears throat> you're not physically trying to hurt. Th- well, you are, I guess, <laughs> trying to tackle him. Yeah. Tackle, so maybe yeah. not a great analogy, but you're, I mean, you're trying to physically hurt this person. Yeah. And I fought that you look up to of my friends. Yeah, I fought my friend before. I fought my friend in in, in uh, uh, Canada, and man, you should have seen us back before the fights. Coach was like, "Fuck are you doing? You guys are fighting. Stop hugging <laughs> right. each other. Right. This is my friend. Separate that shit." <laughs> and you know, I was jabbing, beating him up. It was a little easier to separate that for some weird, weird reason mm-hmm. because he was my friend. I kind of knew what to expect, and. You know, we're hugging afterwards and stuff. It's it's a weird sport, man. Yeah, it's yeah. the best thing I ever done, but the weirdest shit ever. What is it that you love about the sport? What is the one thing that you would say that no one understands that yet you're really in love with? Is it the walk? All right, I want to take a quick minute to talk about our partner, Choctaw Casino and Resort. Uh, we are really, really humbled uh, and grateful to be a partner for them. If you've listened to the show for any amount of time, uh, you've heard how great the resort is there, how great the casino is, the new expansion. They've doubled in size, 3,000 new slots. They've got unbelievable sports bar. They've got unbelievable restaurants, unbelievable movie theaters, arcades for kids. It is endless, the things that they've not only improved but added. Um, but it's just an the, the experience that they provide is second to none. Choctaw Nation has done an incredible job with the community, with philanthropy, with support. Um, they have just done incredible things. So we are extremely humbled and grateful to partner with Choctaw Casino and Resort. Make sure, I know you know it, it's just a short drive of 75. Go check them out. And now back to the episode. Honestly, it's between the walk to the fight to the finish. Mm. It's like... Everybody and their mom could have their own opinion, but they'll never know what it's like Like, just for that walk only to get there Mm -hmm. where you have people chanting and people booing and you have people watching on TV that you don't even know. And then the boss is there saying, don't fuck up. And then your family that you don't want to let down. You have all these emotions racing in and you're like, shit, can you all just sit the fuck down? And then (laughs) you have an opponent looking across and I'm going to kill you. You're like, fuck. And then you have to get in there and the whole time you're not getting it together. And Bruce Buffer is announcing and you're like, oh, fuck, it's almost that time. (laughs) It's about to happen. And the ref goes in the middle, say, you ready? You're like, no, that's what you really want to say. And then you look at the other guy and you know there's nothing you can do to stop that person from taking that step forward forward and you're like fuck i I have to figure this out and i haven't figured it out Mm. that's that moment that is a fear like anything else that's that's a great way crazy man it's it's crazy explain that yeah it's crazy that's so open though that's so much transparency in that because you hear you're all like i can't wait to get out there it's like get out of here man they're lying i do a speech when i talk about walking down the tunnel yeah and the fear that's really in you like going to a football game if you're not nervous then something is fucking wrong with you yeah oh my god you're not breathing Mm. i'm terrified certain guys are crying oh i'm scared they're anxious and all this for me it's the same thing like i think you the same way tyler is taking the first hit then you're like, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. No, yeah. We're, we're mm-hmm. playing. Yeah. Yeah, but the other weird thing about the sport is there's something about getting beat up, and, and you experience that as a it's It's very embarrassing. Oh, it right? sucks. And so you're getting, if you lose, in front of millions of people. Whereas in football, you lose. It's like, yeah, it sucks, but it's there's not. A team. Yeah. There's an ego yeah. hit even yeah. further yeah. when you get beat up. Yeah, and I think, too, like, you know, the first hit in football, it's like, oh, yeah, we get that first get it out. 
If you take the first hit wrong, you're done. <laughs> you're done. It's not like you the get a warm up shot. Right, you know? no. I can't yeah, take that's that. A good point. Okay, no flag, no yeah. timeout. Hey, timeout. Uh, timeout. Oh, what? You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, kind of got me. Hold on, coach. Uh, hold on, hold on. Give me, water. Water. Give me a second. Like and and, and credit to that. Uh, my last fight, I lost about a year ago, but I know Sean Strickland. I fought him. Bef- I trained with him, so I, I, know, I wasn't overconfident, but I was like, I know what to expect. He's weird. I trained with him. He's got this weirdness when he fights like he'll punch here and somebody will hit you but literally like you said the first punch did something to my eye i was like what the hell he punched so awkwardly that it hit my eye in a weird way and i'm like okay i'm I'm still okay and then two more punches and then my right orbital broke and then i just remember doing this and then i just saw black and i was like oh my fucking god i lost my my right eye i can't see so i can't say hey ref hold on right yeah you're still going and then He's still trying to kill me. Oh. And now I'm panicking because I can't see. Oh, man. So now you need your best weapon. You know, my eyes are my best weapon. I'm like, I see half of him with this. And this is already gone. So I'm like, I'm trying to fake it. And now I'm protecting myself. And I was doing such a bad job that he was still hitting me. Mm. At one point, I couldn't see how far he was. So I was looking at his feet. I was like, okay, I can measure him by his feet. Mm. So I was trying to do math in my head. Okay, if I threw a small jab and a long cross and a longer jab, I can reach him. I was doing all this shit in my head. I'm getting jab. I'm moving. I'm trying to psych it out. I'm trying not to lose my shit. I'm trying not to give up. Mm. I look over. My coach is like, hang in there. I go back to the corner. I'm like, fuck. And I can't say nothing because I don't want the ref to stop the fight because I'm like, I I don't want to go out like a bitch. Mm. (laughs) But are you thinking it's going to come back though? Or you're like, oh, no, this is gone. Uh, I, I kept squinting to think it would come back. And I'm like, this shit is, is not coming back. It would kind of come back blurry, but then I get hit again and it will gone. And I'm oh like, shit. God. And this is five rounds. So mm. five is 25 minutes. Oh. And, you know, he, I got head butted. I got knee, hit in the groin. And I'm embarrassed. And my friends and my family is there. And then I'm, I know I'm underperforming. And, and this was my shot to fight mm. for the title. I knew it. Because I had four fights clean i'm like if i win this so all that in my head and i'm like this this can't be it this makes no sense why and i'm like you got to keep it together keep it together i'm standing up i'm still fighting i'm still getting my ass kicked i can't figure it out i can't see him and i'm just taking an ass whooping as much as i can to do something i'm like there's got to be a way so the whole fight i'm like okay uh that didn't work okay that didn't work okay i got him with that i gotta keep doing that all right okay that's working ah shit that was a bad idea Mm, and this is going on and yeah, I lost, and you know, I felt like even though I lost the fight, I wanted to battle with myself because I, mm. I, I don't remember I've ever been through fire before. Yeah, mm. and I remember being in the hospital bed, and my eyes were swollen, and I cried, and I was like, "This makes no fucking sense." It's, and as much as I wanted to quit, I couldn't. I just knew it would kill me if I quit. Mm-hmm. And my coach came in, and he was like, "Listen, man, we had a great run." I'm like, "What the fuck are you talking about? I'm not done. You think I'm done?" I'm not fucking done. He's like, all right, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making sure. I'm not fucking done. I'm not going like that. I'm not fucking done. And I went into this deep depression for months. Mm. Just, you know, with the media and everything. And I, I just had to take it. And I'm like, I got to crawl out of this. And even that prior to that, I had to go to the hospital the night before because I kind of overcut weight. Nobody knew this. Mm. I overcut my weight and my kidney was kind of shutting down. Mm. Oh, wow. And, and Oof. you know, I've, even though I went to the hospital, they gave me IV. I still didn't feel 100%, but ain't no time for that, right? I got to put it over here. I don't have time for this. So went in there. I felt okay. And then that punch happened. And then it, it just didn't make sense. And I could have I pushed out the night before, but I didn't. I was rolling around the bed. I, was like, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. So we finally made the call to go to the doctor. We kept it hush. No one mm-hmm. knew. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, I got IV and even the doctor came like, dude, your levels are so low. Two more levels down and your, your kidney, would, you're dead. Wow. But my mentality was just so strong. I said, I'm not going to quit. I was fighting it. I remember fighting the pain. And I was like, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. And, you know, even though I didn't win, I, I really felt I wanted to fight with myself. Dude, yeah, seriously. so you said a couple, yeah. couple months, right, of depression. Like, I'm hearing this and, and I think of this, I mean, obviously – not a win on the books, but like, I'm like, hell yeah, that's a win. Like <laughs> you had a broken orbital, you had the things that you had and you continue to fight. And not only did you, yeah, like 
you didn't quit, but you literally lasted five rounds. Mm -hmm. Like you went the distance and, and still pushed through. Like at what point did you say, okay, gosh, that was a freaking battle that like maybe everyone else thought that was a loss. But for me, that really was a win because dude, the, the mental fortitude through that. That's a lot, man. That's, I don't yeah, know. I don't know many people on the planet that can <laughs> push through that. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess doing those time, <clears throat> having the right people around me to, you know, reinforce that positivity and be like, listen, this happened, but you still did this. And I'm yeah. like, it's not enough. Cause I'm always hard on myself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can beat that guy nine times out of 10. I can beat him. Cause mm -hmm. I'm so competitive. And I was like, I was just so hard on myself and it, it took me a while to, to, to get out of it that it's okay. Mm -hmm. Because I think what I was latching onto was what the spectators think, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. what my boss think, what, what the viewers think, you know, that I lost my shot, that they're thinking, oh, he's old now. I mean, even when they found out my age, they're like, he's 37. I never even talk about my age. Mm. I don't even fight my age, you know? Mm. So that's what I was focused on, what, what others thought. Mm. And it's so easy to fall down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Isn't it funny how quick things turn? Mm. Yeah. 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 Right. So you're, you're a contender and then, oh, he's old. Like, right. Just like that. Yeah. Forget that I beat Anderson. Forget yeah. I broke a guy's leg. Yeah. Forget I had two more fights where I did dynamically well. well you oh, you saw lately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was focused on that. I was right. listening to what people think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so after you get the win here coming up in July, what, what's next for you? What are you going to do? I mean, there's a, there's a guy I want to fight, you know, Darren Till. He's this British dude. Yeah. That I just want to slap the taste out of his mouth. So he's the guy <laughs> I want to fight. Hopefully I fight him in his country. I told him I'll come to your, I'll come to enemy turret. I'm that confident. I'm going to beat your ass. I'll come to your hood and beat you. And, you know, I'm still looking at the champ. I, I want to fight the champ. No disrespect to him. I think he's great. But there's a reason why he's not saying my name. Because he knows. He knows I'm the last dynamic striker left. You know, he's mm -hmm. outclassing all these guys because they don't know. They don't, I know that side because I fought in my whole life. And that's who I am. Mm -hmm. And style makes styles. But the politics, your rank number here. We, the people, feel your rank here. I'm like, I got to think I'm number one mm -hmm. in my mind. That's how I have to think. Right. Yeah. And right. the people that do the ranking, they don't even fight. Yeah. Which is right. the weirdest shit ever. Yeah. yeah. How do you not fight? How, how do you not know the sport are you going to tell me? They're not former this? fighters that are. No, no, I mean, they're not fighters. They're just some dude. I know up the nothing. Street. Sorry. Yeah. I know nothing about the sport. Sorry. Yeah. I, that, that, that's other basically you, who they are. That's basically me. who they are. Yeah. Yeah. We know. Yeah. <laughs> I call it a dojo over there. So give, uh, give me a break. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I'm not done, man. I want to fight the champ. I just. I just want one shot at it because I know I can beat him. Yeah. I know I can Styles beat him. make fights. And it you guys does. have the same, Adesanya. Same yeah, he's style. long. Yeah. He's dynamic-ish. Yeah. But I'm like a fucking video game oh. character. He mm. likes Naruto anime. I like Dragon Ball Z. It's perfect. Mm. Mm. Let's be nerds, bro. See, I think in most, <laughs> in most episodes, we would talk about like, hey, what's... What's after when you transition, you know, the rest of your life, what are you doing? I don't think that's, I don't think that's this conversation. I'm not because, done. because you have so much more to do and so much more to accomplish. And in our case, and Darren was like the epitome of this, like blinders on tunnel vision yeah. on football, 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 football. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that as we look back on yeah. it, I think that was, that was a, uh, a deterrent to maybe success. Yeah. But I think in your line of work, you cannot be distracted, right? Can't. Like no. you are all about, okay, the only thing that matters is July 2nd. I'm going to, I'm going to go beat that dude's ass. And then from there, go get ready for the next one. Yeah. Uh, but I want to ask, and, and this is kind of, this is a spark Ben up here is your training styles over the year, how over the years, how has that evolved with, you know, understanding nutrition, understanding recovery? Because I mean, I know for me, man, it was just like, go hard. Yeah. Early on, yeah. I want to know how now you, the actual to... like yeah. how things have evolved and what you talked about your strength coach and your MMA coach, but like how how dialed in on nutrition and recovery and are you using any technology that or or um, devices that help you within that? Great question. I I, th I think for a lot of people, when your want becomes a must, mm -hmm. you 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 change you change a lot. You know, mm -hmm. people ask me for advice, and I'm like, dude, educate yourself. I can give you advice, but that might work for me. Educate yourself and try it. See what works for you. Um, as far as stuff that I'm doing is the, the basics, but I'm the guy that always said, well, how can we do this better? You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm throwing a jab. Give you an, uh, uh, an example. I throw a jab from here. We were taught 
but I throw it from here. This makes a difference that a lot of people don't realize. Because if I do this, I'm twice as fast because it's more loose. Mm -hmm. And if I do it from here, it's more disguisable. So I'm always trying to find ways to do things that will shorten stuff. Mm -hmm. I just did a spinning back kick on the Instagram. I saw, I saw that. that. <laughs> Unbelievable. But I was like telling chest, my buddy. Chest, yeah. I was telling my buddy that in order to really train the full dynamic of control and timing and accuracy is to put yourself in that weird position. And credit to my senseis who made me do things differently. Mm -hmm. So I said, I can hit you from this close with a mm -hmm. jump spin and back kick. And I'm like, no way. And I, yeah, you know, if, you're, so. if you're listening, stop what you're doing right Press pause, <laughs> go to your Raya Hall on Instagram. <laughs> and I guess when you listen to this, it'll be last week and watch this kick he's talking about. It's unbelievable. It's mm -hmm. cool. It's all right. But um, it, it's just finding new ways to, to become a better version of yourself, mm -hmm. whether it's in life or in my sport. I'm, I'm learning for the first time to let go. Yeah. The other day mm. I went to California because I felt overwhelmed. Mm. Granted, I had some personal stuff. You know, my mom was not too well. And, you know, I'm worried about the fight and the opponent I didn't want. And I'm just letting all these emotions come in. And I'm like, I got to get out of here. And I went to California. I went to the beach for a couple of days. Mm. Drove a Bronco around, which is a nice Pretty car. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, a big fan of those. Bronco hit me up. So I drove, <laughs> <laughs> I hung out there and I just let go. I, I wasn't worried. I, and... It's so hard to let go. That's mm -hmm. hard to do, especially this close yeah. to your fight. Yeah, it, that's and hard that's, to take I days felt off. like I needed that. I needed yeah. to just let go. But when I say let go, it was more of just, it's okay, bro. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We don't get that a lot, you know? Yeah. One of the biggest things I never do is this. Yeah. I never do that. I'm always mm -hmm. like, that's cool. What's next? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't appreciate what I have. And even with the Volvo, something that simple. Because my friends make fun of me. What's up with the soccer mom? Picking up my kids today? Yeah. And I'm like, no, not really. But your wife. You know, but I, I, <laughs> I try to, again, get comfortable with that uncomfortable. It's a mindset. Mm -hmm. Okay. People look at this as this car. But when you go in the car, you're like, yo, this is the Volvo. Yeah. You know, it's comfortable. And I'm trying to, like, get out of that. What you care what you think. Mm -hmm. Because we care so much what people think that it hinders our life. So we, it guides us into a projection we don't, we don't even want. Yeah. Yeah. Forgetting who we really are. Right. And I've forgotten many times who I am. Yeah. Remember that scene in Lion King? Hits him in the head. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go with that damn voice. There you go with that voice again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, when you stop giving a fuck what people think. You man. have to stop do, giving the fuck, man. Yeah. But right. here's the problem with not giving the fuck. You still give a fuck. That's yeah, the do. thing. You, yeah, do. you do. You're like, I don't yeah. give a fuck. I do. Yeah, you, you, you know, do. you do. Yeah. So I say, how do I not give a fuck, but give a fuck? Mm -hmm. So I'm connected to everything, but I'm detached. Mm. That's how I look at it. I'm connected. So I don't give a fuck what you say, but I give a fuck how I feel. It's how you receive that information. How, what part of me does this affect? That's why I start asking myself when someone says something I don't like. What part of me does this affect when you say something like that? Like the trolls on Twitter or on Instagram. What part of me does this affect when they say something that, that doesn't resonate with me, that I get angry? I check myself and I catch myself because I'm losing myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the great Joe Rogan Dude, says. Don't speak. read the comments. Yeah, yeah, don't <laughs> read the comments. <laughs> you speak. When you're done, when you... Reach your goal and you do whatever you do and you're done with the sport. Yeah. You need to go speak to athletes. Oh, I, I speak, speak to kids. To I speak no, to not, kids. Only the, not only the kids, yeah. but professionals and really? C suite yeah. people. Yeah. It's, a, yes. it's a mentality, man. Yeah. And it that's is. it's a great mentality. I would that love you have. to get into that. Yeah. Do you know somebody who he could talk to about that? Yeah, that? I got a team at our <laughs> office he can talk to <laughs> about that. The yeah. I mean, there's that. a I'm serious. There's yeah. a lot of people. I would love to get into that, man. My buddy who wrote uh If you need an agent, I'm I'm in the market. Thirty three point three percent of all of your earnings. Come on, man. I'm trying to make a living. Damn. Uh, if you guys ever get a chance, uh, there's a uh, my buddy, Arshay Cooper, he was on the first black rowing team. Uh, oh. uh, it's called Most Beautiful Thing. It's on Amazon Prime, I believe. And, man, you know, his story is incredible. If I ever get him out here, I would love to let him sit down yeah. with you guys. Yeah. He wrote a book yeah. called Sugar Water. And it basically talked about how he grew up in the South Side. Uh, is it South Side? Chicago. Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the stuff that he had to go through. And, you know, this dude came in and gave these kids pizza. And like, hey, you guys want to sign up for a rowing team? They're like, we're black. What the fuck are we doing on a rowing yeah. team? Okay. And the way they just took that over, that transcend their lives differently to now he's traveling doing motivational speeches to yeah. wow. so many people. Incredible human being, man. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, but I mean, your story is no different, man. Yep. But oh, man. you... What you went through, overcame, 
Um, but man, I, what I do love about hearing your story and hearing your personality, man, is your perspective, right? And the fact that you are aware, like your awareness level is the reason I think that you've been able to, one of the reasons that you've been able to accomplish what you have, because so many people have the hard time looking inward, right? And the yeah. fact that you are actually recognizing that, okay, now I can like, I can take role on, on how I am, where I am so yeah. that I can actually go do what I want. And that's like he mm -hmm. said, CEOs, athletes were just so this, 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 mm -hmm. this, you never actually look with the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. And that's a power, that's, power, yeah. so tool. powerful. I, mm -hmm. I, I told a couple of my buddies the other day to, to spend alone time with themselves. And it's like, I spend alone time with myself. I'm like, what's your alone time? Like, you know, I want my dog. I read a book. I'm like, that's not a long time. I'm like, literally sit in front of a mirror. Yes. Like literally, mm. yes. nobody knows you better than you. <laughs> and ask yourself, be like, what's up? I'll give you an example. I did it the other day. What's up, Uriah? Oh, you know. No, I don't. What the fuck are you doing? The fight is coming up. Why are you not 100% disciplined? I, I don't know. I just, I'm scared. So why are you fucking scared? We went down this road before. And I'm mm. sitting there having a full one-on-one -on -one conversation with myself, <laughs> being honest with myself, brutally, uh -huh. telling myself, stop being a bitch and suck up to this shit that you have to do. Uh -huh. And I encourage people to do that. Sit down with yourself a little bit. Yeah. You know, I used to think it's weird, but who gives a fuck what anybody thinks? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm I got to be comfortable with me. Because yeah. at the end of the day, I got me. My coaches could train me and my team could train me. But when I get to that octagon, I'm going in by myself. Oh, that's mm -hmm. right. I'm alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I got to utilize that and I got to rely on me too. It starts with me and it's going to end with me. Yeah. Who does this man sound like? <laughs> Someone I've heard before. So you've heard that, haven't you? See, so you, don't, you don't ever spend time I was with gonna yourself. Say, hold, I on, do. hold on. Yes, I do. it does. Yes, you I just, do. It just sounds very different. <laughs> Darren's, just, Darren's just over there in the mirror. Just, <laughs> oh, no. Right, no. It's all good, though. Hey, just, just get, get hey, to know yourself. Hey, hey, hey you, you can still do that, too, all right? Who's the most handsome motherfucker on this block? That's right, me. That's who. That's how you do it. How you doing? Yeah, that's good. There's a lot of wisdom in that. Yeah, yeah. There is, no matter yeah. how you speak to yourself, there's a lot of wisdom in just yeah. being yeah. in the moment with yourself. Yeah, just yeah. be honest, man. Honesty is overrated these days. You know, it's no one wants to do it. I mean, confrontation, I thrive on that because mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable. And I, I want to, again, another story. Shit, I have a story all day. I, somebody parked in my parking spot. <laughs> oh, shit. And I overdid it. I shouldn't have. <laughs> Shouldn't have flipped over their car. I, I almost did. But I, I got in and my parking spot is just right there. It's 11. I'm tired of shit. So I'm like, who the fuck parked in my spot? All right. Fuck it. You were working at control. I drove around looking for another spot. I'm like, man, fuck that. It was easy to park right there. So I came all the way around and, you know, I stand there for a second. And the lady from the manager office told me because they saw me on the camera. I pulled the door. Oh, the door is open. Opened her doors, took out some shit, put on her car, left her door open, and I went back and I found a parking spot and I went home. I went to my, my place and slept. Got a call in the morning. Now I'm cool with the manager. She's like, Uriah, what the fuck were you doing last <laughs> night? I'm like, what are, you, what are you talking about? She's like, we saw you in the camera. What? Oh. Well, she, in my defense, she wasn't supposed to park there. She's like, yeah, but a note could have done the job. <laughs> And I overdid it. And, you know, she said the lady came in, felt a little scared. Apparently the lady had been there for years. I'm like, but I didn't even see her. She didn't even know I'm black. Right. You know, I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> so the lady was nervous and stuff. She didn't feel too safe. So I checked myself. I was like, that was overly done. Yeah, I got into my feelings and I shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. So I went out. I know she has two dogs. I bought a bunch of shit for, for dogs. I have, I have it in my house and I haven't seen her yet. I wrote her a note, just really apologizing because I felt terrible. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, I think I, I know this woman because I ran into her a couple of times without even knowing it's her. So mm -hmm. if I had known, I probably wouldn't have done that. But I forgot where I was going. This It was more of changing the narrative. You sure. Know? Yeah. Just you don't have to get into your feelings so easily. Mm -hmm. I had to check myself and recognize. Yeah, I failed at that moment, but I had to come back and be like, okay, this was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want, that question leads into this. And I know we, we're running up on time. Oh, damn, when you're out, run. yeah, you, you do you have to watch yourself? Like you can't because you can't fight anybody. Yeah, if oh, someone yeah. walks up, you do, you actually can't. You you're gonna go to jail. Oh yeah, you, I'm registered. Okay, so how does that is work? Is that a thing? No, hold on. Yeah, yeah is that a thing? Stop. Is that really a thing? It's a weird, dumbass thing. Yes. So if we get into a fight. And let's say you provoke don't, me. Don't look at. Don't do that. <laughs> don't and do that. Hey, David, David, <laughs> this is on you. Don't if look at me. Somebody provokes yeah. me. 
and I defend myself, I'm going to be in more trouble because of what I know, my knowledge, really? my my attainability. Even if they stuff. attack you first, that's the because I know better basically. So I'm like, what if he has a gun? Take a shot, take a bullet. Oh, just shoot me first, yeah. and then we'll <laughs> then go after. Yeah. But that's what I was told a while ago. So I I try not to. Right. Yeah. But I'm from New York, so people forget. You know, sometimes <laughs> that's, that, that's that stupid stuff yeah. I did the yeah. other day. But I've talked my way out of so many fights, man. I I just act like I'm tough. I'm like, well, what's up, mother? You know, I become hood. Right. But I would never do anything because I know the repercussion. Right. There's only two times I can think about where someone <sighs> called my mom a name. They call my mom a gorilla. Uh. And I, oh, looking for a Negro? Negro here. And <laughs> showed up. I said, listen, I'll be in Vegas at the MGM Grand for International Fight Week. Meet me in the lobby. And uh, well, you can, tell, you can tell me this to my face. And I was ready to lose my career. I showed up extra wow. early. I was waiting. It was this fat Bulgarian dude. See him with this other dude. I'm like, oh, there you are, motherfucker. And I'm That's walking up to him. And I'm like, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. So my mom, you don't know what my mom been through. And luckily, uh, somebody that worked for UFC kind of saw me. And uh, I was like, what's up? What's up? You good? And he's like, what's up? I'm like, here's the deal. I'm going to give you five minutes to go get some more friends. Because I'm going to fuck you up so bad, you're going to need help. And then somebody saw me. He's like, you're right. What's going on? I'm like, no, nah, I'm just having a casual conversation. And then he kind of got it. He's like, bro, what are you just like? No, no, no. Come here. Come here. Come here. He's like, you get the fuck out of here. You know? And he mm-hmm. pulled me aside. He's like, look, dude, you have way too much to lose. You can't. Yeah. This yeah. is a part of the game. And that was the dude? That was actually him? Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't care. He showed up. So I was like, oh, wow. you showing up for him? You get killed. <laughs> but I was so blindsided because I mm. love my mom to death. I, I'd mm-hmm. probably go to jail. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't do that now. But I was ready. Just wait, just, wait, just wait till kids come in, into the picture. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, hey, without hesitation. And my wife's like, that's stupid. So that now you're not there for your kids? I'm yeah. like, <laughs> you know what, though? <laughs> hey, look. Uh, look, I, it's been like the last 10 years. I, I'd say about 10 years. Like, I've learned real quick that, especially with my little boy going to jujitsu, people mm. will walk into jujitsu class. Who you don't, you have no idea who oh, they oh, are. Oh, right? yeah. So on the street, like, I watch what the hell I, I'm not <laughs> anyone off. People cut what me off. Know? I'm not saying yeah, no. that. Cause you don't know who you're running into anymore. Now Listen, I learned that in Texas. Cause in New York, you can mouth off yeah. here. I, I shouldn't be getting out of my car. I, I yeah. didn't know that. I didn't know if <laughs> oh, someone no. has a gun Yeah, yeah. because yep. Texas law is different. Right. And right. the first several weeks I was here, because no one could drive in Texas. Yes, I said it. <laughs> hey, I'll, hey, I'll, I'll back that. Being from California, I'll back that. Hey, a little right. drizzle, guys. We don't have to drive uh-huh, 25 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah, it's like freeway. a video game out there. Yeah. You, you remember in Oprah how she's go? you get a car. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get a license. You get a... Like, nobody tests for their license anymore. Everyone's just doing what they feel. The cops was like, go ahead, bro. Kill somebody. Anyways, um, say, what was I saying? <laughs> What was I talking about? Uh, don't know in Texas. Yeah, you just don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. So I got out of my car because this dude was cutting me off. And I was like, mother... Served around him. So I was get out of my car. I was like, what's up, bitch? Got that Bobo. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was my challenge. It was my challenge. Oh, yeah, so I look like a badass. Yeah. 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 Don't disrespect him. It was a challenge. <laughs> I got out of my car. I was like, what's up, motherfucker? Blah, blah, blah. And now... A lone voice. I really think God was there. He was like, Negro, what are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, I should probably get back in my car. And when I went back, went to training, I told my coach, and he was like, are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah. You couldn't have gotten killed. I'm like, how? da 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 yeah. People have yeah. gun here. It's okay. Right. You just hear the they tap on the window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. So I, I go, morning. <laughs> Great driving, you know. <laughs> 10 and 2. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I almost died, but that's okay. You know, I... <laughs> so Dave Chappelle, hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I have an alter ego. I, I'm, I'm Todd Chuckles, you know. My, my voice changes. How you doing, officer? Beautiful day, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I have no road rage. I mean, I have it in my car. Listen, in my car... I am as racist as shit. <laughs> I am so racist. I hate everybody, you black bastard. No wonder you can't drive. Like I am terrible in the oh. car, man. But when I get out, hey man, how you doing? Great morning, yeah. man. When you're done everybody. fighting and you're done speaking, stand up comedy. Yeah. 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 There we go. Uh, oh. Racist in my car. That's the only time I get permission to be racist in your car. That's your stand up special. Racist in my car. There you go. Oh man. 
Oh, man. Oh, we gotta I wrap literally this could up. do this all night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, we got to let you go. I know you got uh, you got training tonight, but oh, we appreciate cool. you taking some time. Dude. Guys, we, thank we you so much. Last. We'll be fun. watching, Mariah. Thank you. Yeah, we'll watch really, it, that, that'll be my really first fight. It. I'll watch. I'm watching. Oh, yeah. You. yeah. I'm watching Shit, no you. pressure now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> that, that awkward white dude, I, I'm pretty sure he's watching. <laughs> he might be gay. I don't know. <laughs> Y'all just took it to a far left, man. I'm over here sitting down. Y'all just went left. And your rag comes out of the tank He's like, I'm a little uncomfortable now because I knew that Ben dude's watching. <laughs> Oh my oh, god. Cover them god. nipples, you're right. Oh no. <laughs> uh, tune in next week. We'll have why did he leave? <laughs> why did, we're gonna be canceled after this one. We're gonna be canceled. Oh man. This man. was uh, man, honestly thank you. I can't believe I took this long. To, uh, wait, to do it was this. both of us, man. Yeah. It was both yeah, of us. Well, man, I had so much fun. Tyler's what? the world's worst communicator. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's like I'm terrible too. So when he was like, hey man, I'm so sorry, I'm like, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> he yeah. apologized first. <laughs> yeah, man, I'll let I it go him. this time. <laughs> Don't yeah, do don't it. do it again, bro, because, you know, my time is very... <laughs> Meanwhile, I forgot to... Yeah. Holly was the one who was like, hey, remember that? I was like, I thought I texted. I didn't... She's like, no. I'm like, like, shit. Yeah. So, that's the dangers between group texts, right? Because yeah. now they're tracking it. You yeah. can't be like, oh, no, no, we went offline. We, just, we got it over here. Because then you respond back to that text like, oh, shit. I and I was didn't. swearing, too. I was like, I texted him. She's like, no. I was like, I swear I texted him. Fuck, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was swearing. Yep, that's these two right here. Uh, these two. Yeah, so it worked out, man. We're glad uh, we glad we finally connected. Yeah, and you, July 2nd, mm -hmm. what no, what UFC is this? Is it, man, you got It's got to be bro. 300 by now, I know right? it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I know it's international fight week, so okay. for international fight week, usually it's like, you know, they make like this big foot. July thing and yeah. Yeah. and it's in Vegas, right? It's in Vegas. Okay, so. we're, yes. we'll be there. All right, we'll be there. When, uh, where, you got us tickets? Night? Appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, bro. Which one are you fight night? What uh, uh casino? You said uh, uh, I'm guessing it's gonna be T-Mobile. T-Mobile. Okay, yeah. I would assume yeah. it's T-Mobile. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I would assume so. But it should awesome. be fun, man. So, yeah. so well, the all fight all is the weight cut, the the training, and the eating right and cutting out of sugar. That's the fight. Yeah. That should be fun, you know. Yeah. Mm. I just, I just wish when we get there, we can just fight. Right. We got to get there, sign yeah. posters, take pictures. Well, well you there for a is. whole week? Do you oh, go? Yeah, how, yeah. They, yeah. they mess your schedule the up. The real reason I don't watch is because you don't start till like eleven o'clock at night. Oh, dude, I'm mm. asleep. I'm in my Listen, third. It's sleep cycle. It, by so fight week, you're cutting weight, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'm an asshole. Because when I'm deprived, I was say, they put you in front of people like, oh, while dude. you're cutting weight. Oh my god! Week. Well, how much weight did you say you had to lose for this one? Thirty pounds? Probably ten. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, he's close. He's been dialed in. So close. I'm so Get dialed. this man out of here. I'm gonna be, <laughs> so I'm gonna be in the best shape. Just ignorance. I, I, I planned this <laughs> so perfect. <laughs> we'll cut yeah. that out. Yeah. Yeah. Along that. with the other Come jokes and the. Yeah. But no. Uh, yeah, it, See, it, these it's guys don't know weird. what it's like to cut weight. It's yeah, no, I weight. Weight. no idea. No, never had no, no idea. Bless you, man. I always had to gain weight. weight. I always had to gain weight. My whole life. And so I was telling weight, like weight loss stories, and they're like, what are you talking no, about? That, oh, no, that doesn't God. happen. <laughs> Some weird stuff happens when you start cutting weight. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, I, some uh, weird I can't stuff. imagine. When you deprive, I, I, I could lose 15 to 20 pounds in like, I don't know, 24 hours. No what? I can't. No I've, I've done no it. I've done way. it multiple Bro, times. I've, I've lost. Serious? I've lost 15 pounds in one wrestling. Practice. Sorry, uh, 15 pounds yeah. in one. I know you gotta practice. go, but how do you do that? How do you even do that? I mean, I don't know how you do. Everybody it was sauna, right? Uh, yeah. So I would usually practice, and then we'd take a break, and then we'd all like lay on top of each other, cover <laughs> each other with mats. Weird shit when you gotta lose weight. I'm telling you. Oh, you're <laughs> serious. But the but the room the room set at like 100 105 okay. degrees. You you're in sweats all the way down, and then you just lay on top of each other to keep the heat going. Then you roll a mat over you. The, somebody got so you. So you do that for like 30 minutes to keep sweating. Because <laughs> in in high school wrestling you can't get in the sauna. Oh, okay. so it's illegal if you get caught in a sauna. Oh, okay. So you gotta manufacture. I was wondering what. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. You gotta right. be away. Hey, you got manufactured with duty. You know what I'm saying? Finger. Tyler, I promise. Someone's I promise, finger. Tyler. This is, this is how you do it. I promise. Well, uh, what I did. Uh, Tyler, they don't have a then you go. Then you go back and then you then you drill and you, then you, you put another fingers. hour practice in. Man, that must suck. That's it grueling. Was, yeah. And you guys aren't eating, right? Not eating. And we didn't know. This was back, you know, early 2000, uh, late uh, 90s, early 2000s. No, so no you didn't know. nothing about nutrition. Yeah. Like, 
if I'm trying to lose weight, I'm looking at the box. Right, what has the least amount of fat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and don't was, eat. Yeah. Mm. Don't, eat don't eat no eat. food, yeah. yeah. Which I've learned is the opposite. You got to eat to lose weight. Yeah. You know, if you eat mm. like literally every two hours of this, yeah. you're good because it's a size here. You get your mm. stomach down. Mm. Another topic. But wow. So you're not laying on dudes. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Um, I uh, <laughs> say swear. So I, <laughs> so I used to do sauna. And, yeah. uh, you know, I used to like, just sweat it out. You know, I was younger, so my mind was like, Rrr. yeah. But as I got older, I, I, I learned about uh, Epsom salt bath, yeah. Yeah. Mm. and Epsom salt pulls the water out. Uh. And on the Ultimate Fighter, that's where I kind of really got into it. Mm. And I had to cut my own weight. I fought four times in, in five, in six, seven weeks, mm. uh, and I would go up to 200, <sighs> 85, 200, 85, 205, 85. <sighs> so I did a, a hot bath for 30 minutes, and then when I get out, I wrap up in towels and put on my hoodie or whatever and cover in a big blanket for 30. Mm. That would be like five to four pounds. I would do that like three or four times. Oh my mm. gosh. Good 20 pounds. Oh wow. The hard part is though, like what they started doing in at least wrestling is they will like pee test you if you have any pee left, but yeah. they'll check your dehydration levels. And, and if you are at a certain point, and I think they do, do they do that in UFC? Are they oh, doing no, that? they don't care. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care if he dies. I'm just going to wait and show up and yeah. make it a decent fight. Uh, but but they'll test because so many guys, like the kidney issues, like they're so dehydrated. Mm -hmm. And then they try to just slam like Gatorades and water before. Right. I mean, we would put on like 10, 15 pounds like within, After the weigh -in. within like two hours oh, yeah. of weigh-in. Yeah. I would get back that to like, wild. if I'm 85, I get to 205. Because you don't want to be yeah. too heavy for mm. me at least. Yeah. So I try to get to like 200, 205 max. That way I carry enough water with yeah. my density because yeah. mm. your body is still in shock. Yeah. Right. You can't just eat whatever you want. Yeah. You still eat clean, oh, like wow. salmon, yeah. a little bit of rice because your, your, your body, just, your stomach is going to sap it up, you know, yeah. some wow. avocado. Uh -huh. It's a science to it. Oh, man. I learned yeah. this Amazing. later on. But That's now a whole I don't. Show, I don't. Man. Put Seriously, that. that is a whole show. Doing, oh, just doing that. Yeah. If yeah. you do it right, you see some guys get knocked out quick. Yeah. They over dehydrate because yeah. remember, you need water in that brain, yeah. you know. Uh -huh. There's yeah. no fluid, and it's just on the brain, on the yeah. skull, like that. Oh, right. so they get dropped quick. You're like, how that happen? Yeah, because I'm fucking cutting out. weight. Yeah. yeah. But if you watch one FC, those guys fight like monsters, man, because their weight cut. So a middleweight for them is 185 to 200. So I can be in that threshold. Uh, mm. So I don't have to over or under. Right. Yeah. Right. But for us, we got to be 185. You got to be right at that number. So mm. it, yeah, it's oh, they're wow. doing it really well. They got something right. Yeah. yeah. Goodness. All right, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna get you back on. We're gonna talk about all the weird stuff that happens. <laughs> Cutting weight. Good <Cutting> weight. <laughs> yeah. I told him so. It, and, and this may just be me, but wrestlers yes, back in the day, here it comes. Mm -hmm. There it is. Here's more. Is more. Is like the dudes that were cutting super hard when you'd weigh in, and this was like high school boys. You wear your little tidy whities you know, when you weigh in, and <laughs> all the dudes that were cutting super hard had the p dribbles. On the front of their underwear. Yeah, see, they're looking at me. I'm like, what's a pee dribble? Like, you, you lose control. <laughs> what's a pee dribble? This man does it for a living. <laughs> and he ain't got no damn pee dribbles. <laughs> 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 Never said, yeah. But that was, a, that was a deal, is that you literally, the dudes who were cutting super hard, they always had like a yellow Dude. stain on their underwear because they would pee. See, oh, pee you dribble. <laughs> yeah. Pee dribbles, urine dribbles. Dude, Vacaville like, does some weird things. Yeah, 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 man. We, wow, 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 wow. Maybe that wasn't pee. What was it, D? I don't know. All in together. Yeah, oh, no, <laughs> All right, we gotta go before we get trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah, no, appreciate you, man. All the best. We are. Uh, we're gonna be there supporting you, watching you on TV. We yep. will pay for the uh, pay per view. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> July, oh, July second. Uh, make sure to tune in, but follow your eye, man. He's mm -hmm. he's yeah. a great uh, look. What he talked about coaching kids, man. It, it, it translates through his social media. Yep. I know that, like, that's not like. His focus, his focus is fighting, but man, he's he's a great follow. Hopefully, you got something out of today. I know I did. Yeah. Uh, but it. man, we are we are lifelong man, fans, thankful, man. man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hey, appreciate we will it. be there for the title fight. We will oh, wherever it is. Yes, we will sir. be there for the title fight. Yeah. And and listen, I, I always tell people it's a choice. If you want to follow, you don't have to. I I really don't care about Instagram. 
Apparently, my friends are yelling at me that I'm not using it to get paid. I'm like, wait, you can get paid for this? <laughs> oh, you got the followers. You can do I, it. I've never yeah. done that. I've just used to post what I like. I post funny videos. Yeah. I post cool Some shit. Some of your reaction videos are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to. It's Don't don't force it. It's, I'll force it. It's not follow him. Yeah, follow him. Follow him. How do you think Ford's going to give you? Give you a Bronco if you don't. You know what? Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. Make sure you tag Ford and tell him you want a sexy, handsome black man that speaks well and knows what to do and talk to kids and, and hug babies and kids. Why? Cody Ryan Hall. I could already see my slogan. Oh, Hello. Yeah. Do you drive to work not in style? Well, come on down to Ford Bronco. You look good, but you'll get there looking good. You look right in the camera, dude. Oh, he's done. I was yeah, looking yeah, at the yeah. clock, but that shit looked over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. That's, that's a wrap. It, we appreciate you guys, Thank man. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. It was a pleasure.